Grinch, step into the Grinch or Grinch or Grinch or Fort or GT. Is it too late to quit? Yes. No. Monty says no. Okay, bye. Uh, 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 bye. You can quit, but I'll need your kidney first uh, as recompense. Which you will have to work off your dit. Which one, Monty? Lefty or the, righty? The juiciest one. <laughs> mm. oh, I'm going to have to do some testing. I want to know what that testing is. Yeah, I was going to say, anyone in chat know how to test which of your kidneys? How do you taste you? test your liver? Any doctors in chat or butchers, maybe? <laughs> Wait, we have, Dr. Dr. we have Dr. Bibbles. Oh, Dr. Bibbles, your time has come. Tell us which kidney is the tastiest. It's like I went to medical school for this shit. <laughs> Dr. Bipples, we have an inquiry for you in the lobby. Dr. Bipples, we have an inquiry for you in the lobby. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, yes, nurse, I have submitted my questionnaire in triplicate. I am hilarious. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Unexpectables. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> what a twist. What a twist. No, it's not. <laughs> We're back. A dinosaur. We're back and better than ever and we're at it again and this time we're in the mood we can fly real high with our jetpacks on what is i don't understand what coconut this is. shells how the fuck do you not know the dk rap money <laughs> oh the dk rap i'm sorry i People don't usually start in the middle, to be fair. And then yeah. there's Monty. She's dead. She's dead. <laughs> no! <laughs> uh, well, uh, we're all here. We're all excited to get uh, started on another episode of The Unexpectables. So uh, let's go around the horn and introduce ourselves. Guy Goomba, where can they find you? What are you up to? Oh, God. Uh, working too much again. Uh, you can find me on twitch.tv slash gadget Goomba, no H, Tuesday, Saturday, Sunday, 7 p.m. Eastern Central Time. I might play more Dark Time, not gonna lie. It's fun. I've already streamed it like a billion times, but it's still enjoyable. Uh, <laughs> that being said, uh, there was a game that Zito played that I was looking mm. uh, with hungry eyes at. Mm. Um, yes, Jabroni Brawl. Well, that, that too. No, what was the name of that? Uh, it, it looked like old school Zelda, only slow and. Oh, Shinome. It was. It's yeah. made by two former devs of uh, Resident Evil and Breath of Fire. Oh, oh really? Shit. Okay, yeah. then I definitely have to. That's a resume. So it's it's kind of like if. Not haunting ground. It, it's uh, it's like Ooh, Fatal Frame, but. Ooh. It's like Fatal Frame, but Zelda a little bit, and yep, not modern. Zelda. And you get a you get a gun with three shots because pepper guns are the best. Uh, so there's that. Uh, probably more building. I have many a thing left to build. I'm I'm honestly just waiting for some high fantasy Japan games to come out. I've not been able to be on brand in a long time, but nothing is there. So, uh, I I guess that's me. I'm I'm doing more painting. Uh, I I just posted my newest paint job up on Twitter. I'm very proud of it. Uh, go check it out, I suppose. Okay, right me. on. Oh yeah, Mark Allen Jr. We're gonna find you. What are you up to? You can find me on Twitter.com at Mark Allen Jr. Here on Twitch at Aeon Pro Tech Gaming, and you can follow the adventures of my fat sleepy cat bunny on Instagram at Chonk for Life. I uh, have a very loud helicopter outside my house. Uh, but also, uh, what did you do? I, it wasn't me. It was probably Bunny. She probably stole <laughs> some cheese or something. I don't know. It's me, Mark Con Allen Jr. Come out, Connor. Yeah. Oh, God, how are you streaming from the air? It's Connor. crazy, right? I got a whole setup here. <laughs> <laughs> the, the noise cancellation is incredible. Sorry, Monty did the, the 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 angry voice at me, and I had to stop. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Oh. Soundboard, thank you. <laughs> uh, that being said, uh, I was able to start playing Digimon World 2 the other day, uh, joined by my good friend LJ, and uh, we uh, we got about a twelfth of the way into the game after five hours. It's a long game, um, wow. but we're going to be playing it sporadically. Um, I'm trying to get back into the groove of streaming. I'm very busy this month uh, with uh, a directing project that fell into my lap. Uh, another trip for the holidays and 
of course, this. So uh, it may be a little sporadic still for a bit while longer, but I appreciate you guys sticking with me. Um, no new episode of Blue Lock this past weekend because of the Thanksgiving holiday. Uh, so apologies for getting people's hopes up for that. But this weekend, new episode of Blue Lock, English dub. Check it out. I play Kuan. It's going to be sick. And hope everybody likes what we do. That's it for me. I'm sorry. I just saw the fucking um, star <laughs> epic. <laughs> fucking Ojo and Kai. Oh, and I yeah. did a double Your take. has been spared. <laughs> God. Oh, Jesus. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right on. Zito, where can they find you and what are you up to? Twitch.tv slash Zito and CZ Backlash on Twitter. Uh, the reasons why those are the most important is because uh, Friday I will be selling off character designs uh, that I made last week, but in my infinite wisdom, I thought it would be a cool idea to try and do the auctions on Black Friday weekend, which was a horrible fucking failure. So we're going to try round two this weekend. Uh, after that, I, I crave Jabroni Brawl and we're going to, I'm going, we're going to get the stream together and fucking raid some random public server and just fucking go ham. I will join you in this endeavor. Good, because this game is fun. I have, I actually have, like, pledged to my, uh, to my audience that I should probably try and get anyone who enjoys FPSs to play this game. So I'm just like, man, imagine if Bosco was playing Jabroni Brawl. That's not me saying he has to do it. That's just a fun idea. That's me saying he has to do it. <laughs> oh, okay. Do you want to get in on Jabroni Brawl? It's free. All you have to do is just literally... If you have Half-Life 2 Episode 2 installed on Steam, you can get Jabroni Brawl for free. <laughs> Bold of you to assume I have to. Well, that was more me talking to the audience, you know, trying to sell the idea. I got you. No, Mark, you have to get this now. Sh sh get, get a Steam account right now. Spend $8 to get Half-Life 2 Episode 2 and nothing more. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> And then also we went down a rabbit hole on Tuesday with fake mon, and now I I caught the bug, and now I'm making a fake mon nonsense. So that might be an art stream. Excellent. Uh, <clears throat> Edward Bosco, where can they find you, and what are you up to? You can find me at Ed Bosco via Instagram and Twitter, right here on twitchtv slash Bosco. Time. Uh, new world record. Uh, Monty Glue, where can they find you and what are you up to? Oh my god, everything happens so much. I beat Pokemon yesterday night with Arkolf. Um, good, I really enjoyed it and I'm gonna play probably more of it. Um, but in terms of streams, uh, tomorrow should be more Dungeon the Mad Mage. Oh boy, did something interesting happen. Um, they... <laughs> They went through a forbidden door, and now they're in a place that's fun, and I can't say more than that, because it'd be a spoiler. Um, so definitely come and check that out. They took a portal, and now they're somewhere they really should not be. Um, and then on Mondays, we started up, albeit very late, we started up session zero of uh, Mass Effect character creation in like the first little chunk. Um, so that will be starting at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time will be Mass Effect. Uh, and already it's really fun, so come and check it out. And then, uh, if you haven't seen already, I, I put it on my Twitter, I put it on my YouTube, and it's on my stream now. I actually have an intro video that I edited and made myself, like a like a good child. I'm very proud of it, like a child would be proud of a macaroni drawing. I My first time editing a video like that before, and it's a lot of fun. So if you, if you see it on my YouTube, give me a comment. I'm very proud of it and very happy with it. That's it for me. Right on. Uh, they can find me on Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube.com slash Distortion Devil. I stream Tuesdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, we started Grim Fandango, and it's a lot of fun, and I like it a lot. Yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah it's, it's really good. It, it's <laughs> like peak writing, peak LucasArts style point and click adventure. Uh, just, just very, very fun, uh, very humorous game, pun intended. Very dedicated uh, to the tone. Oh, yeah. 
Uh, and, and pretty interesting world as well, I, I would have to say. Uh, yeah, Glottis is great when he's not, you know, making <laughs> sounds the entire goddamn stream. Uh, pent up aggression. Uh, he, he's he's just very loud and <laughs> <laughs> a little of Claudius goes a long way. A little, yes, exactly. I appreciate him. He's he's a great character, but uh, a little excitable. Uh, yes. Uh, other than that, we got our wonderful sponsor to thank for this evening's episode of the Unexpectables: Die Hard Eyes. Die Hard Those are. Those are nuts. I need the right sound effect here. Where are they? There they are. Last time go. I used my beloved Die Hard Dice during Dungeons of the Mad Mage, I rolled a lot of 20s, so y'all better be scared. That, that rumbling you hear uh, with appropriate uh, with appropriate kanji onomatopoeia is uh, Die Hard Dice. Uh, you're your one-stop shop for dice and dice accessories. And if you head on over to dieharddice.com, you can use the code UNEXPECTABLES to save 10% on your order. Get those orders in now, because the holidays are just around the corner, and my goodness gracious, we're going to have a lot of busy mail distribution should we, places. Should, are we... Are we uh, should we tell them, like, the, the recommended order by shipping dates? Uh, yes, uh, they have those listed on their website, I believe. Yeah, if you're in the UK, you want to order before December 1st, which means if you're in the UK right now, I think you're late. <laughs> yeah. So get it done <laughs> today. Uh, if you're in the US, they recommend doing it by the 12th, and that's, I believe it's continental US, so Hawaii and Alaska may be different. And if you're not in the UK or in America, then die. Oh, good luck. <laughs> Silly Monty, you're a part of America too. Don't. S I, yeah, North America. Well, don't pants. be embarrassed. You're my pants. It's fine. Your pants. Yeah, you're our, your Canada's pants. Wait, so does that make like Mexico your the shoes? Feet? I thought Canada was our hat. No, if you wish Canada was your hat. Well, you keep us warm. Yeah. <laughs> We do absorb that cold for you. Anyway, continue, Connor. <laughs> yes. Uh, they also have a couple of holiday codes if you're planning on buying in bulk. Uh, none of that money will go to us, but we figured uh, they're right on the website. We can share it with you. If you have $50 of products in your cart, you can get $5 off if you type in the code HOLIDAY5. Uh, $10 off if you type in the code HOLIDAY10 for $80 or more, or if you have $120 you can get a whopping $20 off if you type in Holiday 20. And there you go. Uh, with that out of the way, we got some... Vinan Norvius, thank you for the nine months. Hello, my name's Digsby. This is for Digsbert. My mates told me Digs. I'd dig your hole for 10 electrum. <laughs> <laughs> I'll dig you a hole for 10 electrum. Oh, Monty, Whoa. Soon. Just soon, no, just soon. No one's using it anyway. Soon. Dip and Bipples, thank you for the... Whoa, where'd that cord come from? Uh, Dip and Bipples, thank you for the uh, 16 months. Hi, I find human goes good with a nice white wine. Uh, okay, Mark, I, I need a heard... kidney and white wine, please. Okay. Uh, more three and or thank you for getting a tier one sub to zero bahamut zero bahamut zero bahamut five five zero bahamut ten <laughs> uh crazy meta thank you for the 28 months i lost track of episodes during october but i'm caught up now and resuming watching live a hey. <clears throat> bill msu thank you for the 30 months shadow flare thank you for the 32 months one sweet girl thank you for the 13 months oz 195 thank you for the 29 months uh, ben Franklin with his shirt off. Thank you for gifting a tier one sub to Random Face. Snapper Jack, thank you for the seven months of Prime. Uh, Dragonal Chemist, thank you for the 31 months. Uncle Comic Book Guy, thank you for gifting a tier one sub to that one, Joseph. 
Uh, Dax99, thank you for the 30, 30, uh, 32 months. Warfay, thank you for the 32 months. On second thought, let's not go to Fort Dort. It's a silly place. It is a no, silly we're place. going. We're going. We're going it's back. Not a castle. We're going. Gaben's Prophet, thank you for the 19 months. Uh, love you guys. Currently catching up on the VODs. Yeen King, thank you for the 100 bits. Zebzi Bezabil, thank you for the 100 bits. Last time on Four Door Z, Nem five Namekian minutes of screaming. Uh, minutes are approximately 24 Earth minutes. That is true. Uncle Comic Book Guy, thank you for gifting a tier one sub to Integers. Hmm. Callum Draws, thank you for the 50 bits. Is this the episode of Fort Dord Z where Gaius becomes the legendary Super Seder? Maybe. <laughs> Good. Man, finally someone got the fucking joke. That's so good. I'm, I'm so happy someone finally fucking said it and it wasn't me. On Cardib. <laughs> um... Do, 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 do. Impact Frame, thank you for the 29 months. Hey, guys, hope you're doing well. Hey, yeah, thanks for the animation, dude. It was awesome. Oh, my God, yeah. Mm, we so won't know cool. over that. During the art stream, uh, which is taking place at the uh, last Friday of every month, I should say, where I'm joined by a cast of characters. And we go over the fan art for uh, the month. Uh, Zanwind, thank you for the... Uh, thank you for the 30 months. Yesterday was my birthday. I've been looking forward to this. Protect the Fort Dort Z. Well, don't happy worry. birthday. Happy birthday. Also, happy birthday. Uh, uh, Resmu5, thank you for the 11,500 bits. Uh, <laughs> I just dropped in to say I finally got to join a D&D campaign. I joined an ongoing Tomb of Annihilation game oh. as a revenant college of distortion bard named Pale Zombie. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, that's mm. awesome. Living dead. Uh, <laughs> excellent. And thank you so much for the 11,500 bits. Yeah. More Thrandor. <laughs> thank you. For the 100 bits. Monty playing Mass Effect was everything I wanted to see compressed into 45 minutes. <laughs> I'm, I'm a Renfield. space cadet. <laughs> <laughs> I am the Renfield space 88. Cadet. Thank you for gifting uh, five subs to the community. Tommy Toon, thank you for the five bits. Uh, we need a creature of some kind to feed bits to, like the good dragon boy from the last campaign. I, yeah, I still say we. Uh, yeah, I still say we should use the bucket. It should definitely be the bucket. Yeah, we should get a bucket. Get bucket. the bucket. Think about that. Uh, Ace Bounty, think for the forty-five bits. You may be wondering what happened to your poetic bard. Uh, while well, my friend poems are making uh, uh, while well, my friends making poems is very hard, because what's the fun of saying things twice? Though it should be easy. Uh, it though it should be easy, it won't be nice. Now we wait for the story to be told. Don't worry now, Ace Bounty never folds. Solora Shadow, thank you for the uh, 20 bits. Uh, why do I have to get up at 4.50 uh, right? Uh, uh, why do I have to get up at 4.30? Oh, right, fucking time zones. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, boy, 4 a.m. <laughs> Just eat the unexpected burger. <laughs> that needs to be a thing now. Uh, Who wants an unexpected burger at 3 a.m.? Listen, other 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 D and D stream shows may have their own theme parks, but we've got unexpected burger. Damn it! Uh, discount GM, thank you for the seven months. Can't wait for whatever chaos Monty throws at the party. Mad Tom K, thank you for the 31 months. Loving this campaign. Excited to see where this episode goes. Uh. Kuro Okami, thank you for the 26 months. Let's-a go. Wahoo. Wahoo. Oh, fuck's sake. Here we go. Wow. Here we go. I, I, I'm, I am so happy we live in a timeline where people give uh, Chris Pratt shit for talking in his normal voice, but then praise Charlie Day for talking in his normal voice. There we go. 
Uh, I'm just sad we live in a world where Mario is the weakest link in a Mario movie. Yeah. Uh, Raw Sodium, thank you for the 200 bits. Uh, been listening to a radio play for a couple of days and absolutely loving it. You absolutely crushed it, Bosco. Seriously, you did amazing. Uh, Quietus Riotus, thank you for the 121 bits. Last time on Fort George Z, Gaius achieved Super Goat. Kai revealed his class. Otho met the love of his life. Iskan found paper. And Milo <laughs> taught the axe beaks to praise the sun. <laughs> oh, that's an accomplishment. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that, that sounds like a really eventful episode. Are we sure we're watching the right show? Guys, imagine, am, am I imagine, the Krillin of the group? <laughs> imagine Dawn, your your little axe beak Dawn, like gets a plus in religion for like it's completely useless. <laughs> oh, oh also, God. Dawn, I'm, I'm sorry. Be, make, I'm, a, make a religion check. I'm gonna have to be that guy real quick. Uh, someone in chat just said no one cares about Luigi. All right, bet. Here's something even more cursed. Donkey Kong looks like Bonzi Buddy. You're welcome. <laughs> it does. I yeah. hope that fucking ruins your experience. <laughs> oh. Uh. Uh. Chew bacon. Thank you for the 400 bits. Welcome to the Fort Dort Grand Tour. Uh, Sloth of the Scythe, thank you for the prime sub for four months. Mikan Pachi, thank you for the 100 bits. If Gaijin hasn't told you yet, enjoy the gift I sent you, Monty, Zito, Mark, Connor, and Bosco. I am unaware of this. Wait, yeah, what? I... What did you uh -oh. sign us off for? Is it going to be the fun? Is it going to be the fun kind of surprise or an uh oh kind of surprise? Don't ask me, cause I don't know. Uh -huh. I see. Uh, well, Infinite Kitty, thank you for the 31 months. Thornton 6000, thank you for the 27 months. Midnight Road White, thank you for the 32 months of Prime. Insert any sound effect, thank you for the 10 bits. Uh, I would, but someone would get mad at me. Here. Uh, been <laughs> trying to get my dumb printer to work because it's a big thing I need by tonight. Cheers to technology for not throwing me over the ledge of inconvenience. My my favorite tweet will always be like me approaches my printer. Hey, buddy, I need to print something off real quick. Printer makes territorial print printer noises. <laughs> <laughs> the most accurate thing. <laughs> <laughs> Cthulhu and friends, thank you for the prime sub. <laughs> Thanks, uh, Cthulhu. <laughs> <laughs> the Holy Carp, thank you for the 16 months. The Atom Bomb, thank you for the 100 bits. And binging season one of the Unexpectables to get through work. Got the task arc, got all misty eyed. You're awesome, Zito. He had to get up. Uh, Captain Thunderbolt, thank you for the five bits. The party is going to East and Vale. The party is going to East and Vale. 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 I have taken Gaijin's right pinky. Also, hi, Monty. Damn. My ears are over. Hi. <laughs> Keep that pinky to yourself. First, first my H, then my pinky. What's next? <laughs> Damn. Mark's liver or kidney. What Wait, was it again? I already oh, shit. lost a femur last week. You lost a whole bone? Yeah. How, how do you? How does your arm work? Just take my whole skull, uh, I'll be all right. Your femur is in your leg. <laughs> oh, how does so your my arm work? <laughs> just fine. Connor, I'll, keep I'll, going. I'll, I'll, like I'll, I'll, look like, I'll look like that flathead Wojak. Uh, Peter Piper, <laughs> the portable pen. Thank you for the 21 bits. Mm -hmm. Electrum is the only true currency? Dang, then why does nobody use it? Oh, well. Goblet of fun mugging. Thank you for the 32 months. Greasy X Spoon. Thank you for the uh, 32 months. Sergeant Tucker. Thank you for the 15 bits. Milo devours gods. But don't call him Aud Aldrich. Praise the sun. Here comes the dawn, bitch. Oh. Here comes. Uh, and finally, Bergflax. Thank you for the 15 bits. Uh, someone distract Gaijin while I get his other pinky. <laughs> Damn. Bergflax. Bergflax is full of beans. And All probably right. flax. Are you guys ready to go? Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm ready yeah. to. Yeah. I'm ready to come to a world of wonder. No. Club. And with that, let's dive in to the Unexpectables. Hmm.
and so we return to the Unexpectables. When last we left our adventures, Otho Valentinius, Kai Valentinius, Milo Brightbeam, Gaius Agni, and Iskan Seat Lolly, the party continues north after waylaying a goblin warg ambush party and conducting lucrative business ventures with the ogre Okeg, who is seeking business on behalf of his ogre wife, ogre wife Eleanor, the party has found themselves in their beloved mud fort of Fort Dort Z. And now, as they bundle down for a rest, we return to the Unexpectables. Oh, buddy. So, question. How how much disarray is Fort Dort Z in at this point? Because it's been a while. It has. Um... You know when you make a snow fort and it like is like one third of what it was because of melting? Yeah. It's kind of like that. Uh, there's probably been a decent amount of rain that's come through given that this location tends like Martorallo proper tends to rain a significant bit. Mm -hmm. um, so it's more of like a muddy ring at this point with like a little divot next to it where a moat probably once was a very, you know, minuscule moat that you've made in one night well i mean it's something it, it's not quite how we left it but you know it's it um everybody's still muted no i'm <laughs> i'm here i didn't have anything to say <laughs> alas the fort has fallen <laughs> well above game uh we rebuild? Yeah, that's what I was about to say. <laughs> <laughs> we we must rebuild. rebuild. <laughs> we must rebuild. All right. I'll say um, <laughs> for everybody, if we want to make this a group check or if everyone wants to do their own thing, I'm going to say everybody make athletics checks for me. Athletics? Or oh, survival geez. of your that's... choice. Survival Survival will be more like making a fire and like making food, whereas right. athletics will be like fixing Don't worry. for it. Do we I assume this is not guidanceable. No, this is not. This is over, okay. of course. Yeah. <gasps> twenty twenty. Nice. Some good vision right there. Right. Uh, I think Eastgan would probably focus on like nineteen. Gathering supplies and stuff. So I'm gonna go with survival. Okay. Abuse that high wisdom. Ball. Yeah. Nine. <laughs> Don't so you were about to say something about how high my score was, weren't you? Uh, I did just as you rolled. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can't tempt the universe like that. <laughs> uh, should be like me and just start screaming before you roll. Roll the Universe. Uh, Kai, would you like Kai. to assist with building the fort, or do you want to assist with survival, like setting up a campfire and just setting up camp? In can general? I just give somebody? Can I give? Uh, can I give these kind of advantage? I'm not. Unfortunately, gonna... this is a long form check, so this is a group check. So you have to make your own check. Unfortunately, can I do it anyway? <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> I'm very okay. sorry. Well, nine. Okay, you help. Uh, you help. Uh, Gaius built up the the re fortify the fortress walls of Fort Dort Z. And Gaius and, and Kai, you work on it for a while, and while it does not maintain its its glory of the past, you do manage to make a, a probably three-foot-tall mud wall in a circle around you. Um, the rest like, of you... No one's going to like this re-release. <laughs> no. <laughs> no one's going to like this re-release. Um, the rest of you, Milo, you managed to find just scattered about the fields uh, some some wood and some grass and things you can use mm -hmm. uh, to make a, a decent enough fire. Um, and Otho, you managed to kind of, while you're looking about the grass, catch a rabbit. Um, and you guys basically make a nice camp with some nice rabbit stew. Uh, the axe beaks are loaded inside of Fort Dort as well, which makes it a little bit cramped with the tents, but, but um, it's it's cozy. It's definitely a cozy camp that you've made for yourselves. So, so I got a hot question for you, Monty. Can Walker join any of us in watches? <laughs> no, they're going to sleep because they're okay. running the whole day. Yeah. Okay. You just, oh, it's just Walker specifically because you just never know you what can't that bird. He's had you his can't control of him. You can't control him. He's going <laughs> to no, do as he pleases. We can't, yeah, but he, he pleases to murder but, so much. He needs a good but, honk shoe so he can murder tomorrow. 
But is his thirst for blood unquenchable? Well, you just don't know yet. <laughs> oh. uh, All right. But before we before we settle down for supper, I'm going to approach Kai. This is the wrong oh. Fort Dord Z, so I don't know if you should. We shouldn't go to Kai yet. God damn it. Damn it. God damn it. <laughs> Fucking god damn it. <laughs> this session's just really short. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to speak to you. It was a good talk. <laughs> and so we they skip talked. The, we skipped the cutscene. <laughs> Basically, I can't believe you press X. Uh, I, I, w I will approach my brother. Fair enough. He is approached by you. Oh, brother, ready to work up an appetite? Uh, depends on what you're... Well, let me put it this way. Depends on what's being cooked and who's cooking it. Uh, it is rabbit that I caught, and I believe it is Mr. Brightbeam that is on cooking duty as per usual. So oh, I, I will allow it. Hazard to guess it will be quite fulfilling. Excellent. Uh, as a wise man would say, make it so, Mr. Brightbeam. Who said <laughs> that? Some wise man. Oh. Uh, all right, then. Uh, do you prefer carrots or potatoes? Yes. Uh, I'll see what I can do. Well, then, little brother. And he'll, uh, he'll pull back his coat and he'll pull out his saber. Oh, like right now? Can't think of a better time. I just, I had, I rebuilt the fort with Gaius. Can he, can I tag out and like, wait, we could double team you. Hey, Gaius, do you want to punch Otho? Next snap sound effect. <laughs> oh, no. Is this, this is for you, though, Kaiser. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, it's for me, my, in, my enjoyment, I assume, and if, if we beat but you up, is... that's going to be really fun. Yeah, well, this is not meant for enjoyment. It's meant for practice. <sighs> Who said it can't be both? Guys is right behind you. <laughs> <laughs> it just sort of, like, freezes. <laughs> I mean, he's got a very <laughs> valid point. I like validation. I, it's up to you, Otho. I mean, if you really want to crush all of Gaius's excitement right now, you're more than welcome to. I, I would just feel bad about it. Don't crush my dreams. Yeah. Don't crush his dreams, Otho. Because then I'll crush you. <laughs> In this time Fair of play. hopelessness and despair, the least you could do is give him a little bit of sunlight in the darkness. I'm so <gasps> sullen right now. In the background, Rebu is just like lighting his pipe and just takes a puff and rolls his eyes and just kind of scratches his neck. You can come over here and get these hands too, you know. I'm good. That's Thank what you, I figured. Though. Enjoy your birds. Well, since you're both exhausted, I suppose it would be fitting. Uh, 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 don't, don't, don't put words in my mouth. So are we doing this or not? Uh, Kai will take a fighting stance. Kai stands uh, there menacingly. <laughs> Otho will also take a fighting stance. I like to Let's imagine, go. like, Gaius is standing on the edge and just coming out of his skin like his fur turns stripey and he's like a referee now. <laughs> cool. That right. is single-handedly the most disturbing that is, thing that you've ever described. That is the that is the most fucking flapjack thing I've ever heard you say. <laughs> <laughs> Terrifying. Uh, growing your own referee shirt. Yeah, yeah. this is disgusting. <laughs> oh. All righty. I'd say for this, Otho and Kai, just, just so we don't do an entire combat round, obviously. Oh, right. No, obviously, no. I would I would like uh, both of you to roll either athletics or acrobatics of your choice. Cool. I will roll athletics. That's a natural 20. Oh, oh shit. Okay. I, rather, I should say a natural uh, 19. A 12. <laughs> 12. All right. <laughs> Kai, you win this first round. What do you do? Uh, what are you fighting with? My saber. Uh, okay. 
Uh, when you go to thrust with your saber, he's not even going to pull out his saber. He's going to deflect your uh, your jaunt forward, very Wing Chun style, and he's going to judo toss you to the ground. Oh, she. <coughs> oh, he lands on the ground. He start, did you say start? On. Did I? I didn't cheat. You said start. You lunged. Rolls onto his back and he gets back up to his feet. <clears throat> should I? Should I say start? Is is that? I I don't know. I guess you moved. All I did was I just I don't know what that. Okay, that was a thing that happened. Uh, yeah, it was <clears throat> impressive. Uh, yeah. Gaia showed it to me. Apparently, he's a good teacher. Yeah, he uh, he likes to. He calls it a yeet. I don't know what it means. Maybe it's like a hyena thing. But probably some sort of. Just... Probably some sort of. Uh, Sylvan, I'd have to imagine. I'm I don't know giving, what the kids are up I'm to these days. I'm giving you the fair jaunt of me taking a step back. Lancelot, run at them. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Are you joining Again. the fray, guy? He, he yeah, is going to join the fray. All right. Three three way fight. Let's go. Everybody Triple roll either athletics. Match. Athletics or acrobatics of your choice. 20. Soft. Soft 20. All right. 11. 22. Ooh. All right. Mm. Otho, you win this round against both Gaius and Kai. How do you do so? Uh, <laughs> Otho, uh, seeing that Gaius is probably going to be easily the, the the bigger threat of the two at least at the current juncture uh otho is going to uh faint with his saber he's going to uh he's going to try and and trick kai into blocking one way and then he's going to bap him with the blunt end of his saber on the side of the neck and then he's going to focus his full attention uh, and he's going to uh he's going to allow gaius to come towards him and he's going to uh, dip into uh, out of the out of the range of either his fists or his axe, whichever he's using. Uh, and he's going to just sort of bap him with the uh, blunt end of the uh, blunt end of his saber on the side of the neck as well. Oh, axe! What do you take before? Gaius is not a murderer. He's going to use his fists. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want uh, you to live. I get. I I guess like since I guess I got victory over uh Kai. Like I was just gonna have him like try to like double fucking uh cross check. Uh, but yeah. So you fucking just like slap. Like Gaius takes one arm and like swings it across uh <laughs> against uh Kai's neck. And then just like makes him drop to the floor, tries to go in for Otho, but I guess it's too predictable, and then just like gets a nice bap on the side of the head and fumbles over. Ow. Okay. Okay, no predictability. Just like slaps his face and gets up again, holding both fists ready to fight. Alright, last round. Athletics or acrobatics of your choice. Again? Athletics. One more round. Acrobatics. You guys are, by the way, sweating at this point. Mm-hmm. Gross. I, I imagine this is all before dinner. Uh, that's a 15. 19! Okay. Kai, you have won this round. How do you how do you emerge victorious? Uh, I am going to let uh, Gaius describe how he takes out Otho since he rolled second highest, and then I will deal with Gaius. Gaius lunges himself forward for the punch, but then slides front, uh, like frontal on the floor to just like take both fists and slow sweep at Otho's legs and take him out that way, and then handstand up to his feet and run at uh, Kai. Uh, as you do so, <laughs> Kai is once again gonna wait for you to put all of your mo momentum towards him. He is then going to very deftly push you out of the way and reach into his poncho and draw his saber and immediately stick it towards your neck and pause, indicating that he has won the bout. 
Gaisha stand still. Oh, should I have pulled this out? Just like holds the axe up, not in a destructive way, but just like holds it out. Like, <coughs> oh, <coughs> this was meant for practice, Mister Agni. <clears throat> I was okay, uh, good. I was just combining some different styles, so you can you can do whatever you want. Uh, but yeah, if you make oath, I'll make the first move. That was smart. Milo is at this point that you know that your soup is perfect. <laughs> With that 20 earlier 20 survival check, which carries over to your cooking, uh, you know that you are at the prime soup position. Like this is this is peak soup right now. <laughs> now we're golden the hour. Fucking, the fucking monster hunter perfect sound effect after cooking. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Tasty! Okay. Alright, you boys quick, beating each other up. Come get your grub. They do say that hard work is the ultimate spice, Mr. Brightbeam. I heavily disagree with that statement. Honestly, nothing beats pepper. Just straight pepper. It it does so much to so many food. It's more of a metaphorical thing, but sure. Guys takes it as a trial and holds his hand out. Give me the pepper. I literally just I will pour like just a palmful of pepper <laughs> into your. Oh. I face I I face oh. palm myself with the pepper. <laughs> Mister Agni, that's not. Oh. <laughs> My eyes are twinging and like bloodshot. <laughs> this is a good pain. Well, if you if you ever need more, you know you know you know where to find it. Uh, Cups his mm. hand out. Is that really supposed? Well, let's maybe save the pepper face, for face plant. Face. <laughs> if you it, uh, once we get to Quinn Kong, so you can get all the pepper you want, guys, and you can train. I guess that way. I am always doing this. This is perfect. <laughs> just every day, just throwing pepper in his eyes until he develops immunity. <laughs> I got fire resistance, boys. Let's go. <laughs> I don't think fire pepper resistance. and fire are the same Scoville, thing. My Scoville tolerance is through the fucking roof. You have no idea. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. I, I, Gaius is now the sauce boss. Oh, damn. <laughs> Practicing on, on black peppercorns. That, that'll 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 <sighs> train the tongue. Wait till I upgrade to ghost pepper. Ghost peppers aren't real. Yeah, they're just like, like ghost horses. horses. Yeah. Hey! <laughs> Call back. All right. I'm, so as you guys, I'm in... fucking livid. <laughs> uh, so as you guys sit down and enjoy your rabbit stew, which is very hearty and very delicious, yet light and creamy somehow, uh, you all settle down in Fort Dort Z. The axe beaks kind of huddling together like penguins. Uh, and who would like to take? We have a watch we need to make. I'm assuming you guys want to keep a watch. Yeah, probably yeah. Do the same one. Order. Yeah. Uh, I don't have the previous one written down from last week. Could I get? Okay, that order so again? I am dead last because it's morning. I am okay. darkest night, and I believe I am first or second. I'm first, somewhere I in the middle. I think no. I think I think uh, Otho's third because uh, night vision's optional. Right. Let's do E scan, uh, Milo, Otho, and Gaius. How's that sound? Yep. Okay. Sure. Okay. All righty. So, E scan, uh, you would not mind. Po point of order uh, Kai is going to stay up with Milo. Okay. Okay. You got it. All righty. So, E scan. It is your watch first. As everyone settles down, Rebu kind of taps out his, uh, <clears throat> his pipe, and he also enjoyed the meal quite a bit. He kind of rolls over in his bedroll and goes to snooze. Uh, is it dark enough that I need to make perception at disadvantage? It is, yes. Nighttime okay. checks will always be generally with disadvantage without any light provided. Have we snuffed our campfire? That's a good question. Oh. Have you? Um, I mean, I I'm, I'm, I can. I'd be fine with it. Okay. Is this campfire snuff? That will affect well, yeah, checks, cold but it, it will... Tonight? Um, you roll from previous day. It was pretty average, so it's actually not that bad. It's it's okay. okay. Yeah. You guys had bed rolls, and you're you're you have blankets. Tense. Like you're yeah. gonna be fine. We can survive yeah, I think we, it, so we would snuff it. We can easily yeah. relight the fire as well <laughs> if we if we get encountered. So yeah, you have a bic lighter in the form of Milo Brightbeam. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I pull the top of his head off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's not a pez dispenser. <laughs> All right. He's One 22 you kinda, on perception. Yeah, 22, which is really good. 
Um, you kind of mostly use your ears for this. Um, and as the fire is snuffed and the rest of your companions go to sleep, and you kind of keep your your ears, your eyes and ears peered above Fort Dortsey's very proud and not at all questionable walls. <laughs> um, you do hear one thing, and at first it kind of makes your heart start and you get a little bit nervous, but you do hear the sound of what appears to be like a horse um, riding southward. Um, so probably a traveler in the night moving, but they clearly don't see you and they clearly don't notice you as they just continue down the road south southward. Uh, I'm guessing I don't see them. I only hear them. God, no, you do not see them. You only hear like, you only hear very briefly the galloping footsteps of like the galloping horse hooves that kind of rush on by, like going at full gallop and then they disappear. Is um, there if anything distinct or noteworthy about the sound they make? from like normal horses not really um they okay. simply sound lighter you get the sense it's probably a riding horse and not like a like a war horse or anything like not a heavy so you're horse it's not a ghost horse you're not sure <laughs> you'll never know okay because you right. never saw it it'll keep oh. you up for years to come <laughs> but beyond that um with that perception, I feel like because they're going fast, you're, it didn't sound like they were in a hurry, necessarily they were running from something, just from that perception check, but it sounded like they were going quick. If you had to guess, it sounded like a courier horse, potentially, like someone who is probably trying to deliver something fast. Okay. All right. Beyond that, your watch goes without a hitch. All right. I will then wake up uh, it was Milo, Me. right? Next? Yeah. Milo is next. Yeah. yeah. I'll wake up Milo and Kai. And I guess subsequently Kai as well. Yeah. I oh. heard a horse go by, but it was pretty quiet otherwise. All right. That's fine. Oh, no worries. Have a good watch. Um, <clears throat> Kai, you, you said you wanted to have watch with me? It's more that I wanted to talk to you while nobody else was awake. Ah, uh, I understand that. No worries. Oh, too many rocks. Sleeping on too many rocks. Ow. Uh, I'm, Kai's just gonna wherever Otho or sorry wherever Milo decides to post up for watch. Kai's just gonna sit or stand near him. I mean, considering my height, I'm probably just peeking over the top of Fort Dort Z, and uh, <laughs> that's the best I can do. I'll I'll just be scanning because I've got I, I do have that delicious dark vision. So, can I give him advantage on his perception check? Because Kai's not going to look. Uh, unfortunately, this is nah. I guess it, the problem is this is over a course of time, so this isn't really an action you can really help all ah, that much. All right, no worries. Yeah, unfortunate. Okay. I'm very sorry. Nope, no problem. So, what do you want to talk about? So I have a genuine question, but I know coming from me, it's going to sound really sarcastic. So I'm going to try to preface this by saying I don't mean anything by this. I'm genuinely curious. All right. In your opinion, who is worthy of Oren's mercy? Hmm. See, that's kind of the question that I've been fighting for a long time. Um, I think that anyone who wants to turn from evil and wicked ways who wants to do something good with their life i think those are the kinds of people that deserve mercy there are certain th creatures in this world who can't do that obviously the undead um other creatures that are naturally hostile and not uh, lacking the intelligence to discern what could be right and what could be wrong so it it's kind of a, a, a subject by subject basis. It, I kind of know where you're getting at, and it's something I'm still trying to discover. You know, I, I know. I guess, I, 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 I guess I just don't under, especially with groups of organized people that follow the same code. I don't understand if maybe there's like a rule book, like certain people get mercy and certain people don't like i don't understand why one person can get lit in holy fire and another person we set free and that's i guess what's confusing me and 
I don't want something like that to drive a wedge between us, but it was really frustrating to try to figure out. And so I figure I might as well just ask you because you probably have a reason why you would spare one person and not another. And I just don't know what that is. I think a lot of it boils down to the fact that that other person was completely helpless. I'm still trying to figure out for myself, but enough was done. You know, if that makes any sense. I'm still learning to temper when to fight, when when not to, you know? And it's hard. It's hard because you never know what someone's really going to try to do. So maybe I'm being a little ag aggressive in, in what I've been trying to do, and I do apologize for that. But all I can tell you is it's something that I'm working on. I guess I, I think it's important to just think about because... I have to think about it too because I wanted to kill him and I've, I've been thinking a lot about why I just I wanted all of them dead and I've had to live with that and figure that out and you're kind of the opposite end of that coin and so I just think if if we're going to set somebody free like that and we're going to make it a big deal between all of us and have that big debate and some of us are going to get pissed off there should just be a really consistent reason why you do that and if you need to figure that out that's fine but I think it's important because you say the undead don't deserve mercy, but a lot of undead don't have a choice. And by killing them, that is the mercy. You're putting them back where they belong and letting them move on. That's the mercy. So I just, I would. And, and, and I, I totally know. understand that. And you're, you're absolutely right. It's just, I need to see more of the world, you know, have a better understanding of, of who's capable of, of changing and doing the right thing. And, who isn't so no you're right you're right i just i guess i get caught up in it and that's really scary you know after everything i heard about other own clergy you know there there was no there, there was no mercy for anyone and that scares me a lot i don't want to end up like that and i can understand how easy it is to to end up like that so no, you're you're right. I I need to think better about it. I think your heart's in the right place. It's just sometimes that's not enough. Do you think maybe we should talk to ev to to the others and try to discern who we should try to, you know, give a chance to and spare and. I I think that's. <laughs> I don't think we need to worry about that. I think we need to have a talk so that we're all on the same page because I already talked to Otho and I know he's frustrated, but Otho is going to do whatever the group wants to do because that's the right thing to do is you go with democracy. He's going to hold his head up high and then bury everything deep down. So I tried to talk to him. I know Iskan's not mad. I think he's probably just more confused because there was something very easy. He's like, this person should go to jail and he's not wrong. That's what the law says. You send him to jail. So I think maybe just understanding where everybody's at and finding if there's middle ground and overlap. Oh, that's fair. I'm sorry. It's not your fault. <laughs> Trust me, glass houses and stones and all that. I. It's just hard. It, it's hard no one to do the right thing. I think that's probably going to come back and bite me pretty hard now that I think about it. I think you should stop worrying more so about what's right and wrong and just what do you believe in and why do you do things? Because I'll tell you right now, right and wrong is super subjective. There's a lot of people that have done a lot of right things that weren't really all that nice. I get that. I get that. So, I don't know. I just I wanted to talk to you because I figured... There was a lot of stuff boiling under the surface after that talk, and better to get it out in the open than just let it fester, and then we get back, and it all comes out at the wrong point. No, that's fair. That's 100% fair. Communication is absolutely key. Yeah, so. Anyway, I'll let you do your watch thing. I'm going to go study a book. Well, don't get too far. I mean, I'm not going to leave the fort, that's for sure. Also, let me know if you need, like, a, a, a reading light. Uh... I think I'll be okay, but thanks. I appreciate it. No problem. And he's going to walk back to where his cot is. Milo, go ahead and roll for me a perception check. Oh, not performance. There we go. <laughs> Good little twirl. Have another... Dance the dance of light. <laughs> Ten. Ten. All right. You kind of, it's 
you know, you're trying to keep awake is mostly the thing you're focusing on right now because it is mm -hmm. like, you know, getting that point in the night where it's a little bit chilly and you kind of just want to roll up in the blanket. Mm -hmm. But nothing happens. You don't hear or see anything. Cool. Watch ends. Uh, God. No, guys was last. It was it. Um... Otho. Otho. Yes. Otho, that's right. Hey, Otho. Hey. <sighs> it's, it's all right. Yes. It's all right. Yes, Mr. Brightbeam. Um, it, it's... My watch? It's, uh, yeah. Very well. Thank you. Hey, awful. Good night. Hmm? Is everything all right? Yes. I don't think things have been all right for a long time, Mr. Brightbeam, but... You must be tired and... Your watch is ended, so I'll let you get some sleep. Is he being genuine? <laughs> uh, <laughs> if you want to answer it. Uh, sure. Because now Milo's a little afraid. He doesn't want to make his friends upset. Twelve. Twelve. Uh, you can tell that he just doesn't want to talk about it. Okay. All right. Just you know, let us know if we need anything. Mm hmm All right, good All night. Right. Good night, Mr. Brightbeam. Okie doke. All right. Otho, you find yourself positioned in Fort Dortsey, last bastion of, <laughs> of the unexpectables. Uh, are you uh, shifting or are you staying Otho Prime? Uh, I think I should shift after, after the last time he went to sleep and... He feels like he might need it. Okay. How many times can you shift a day? Because you did shift, I believe you shift during the... Oh, yes, encounter. you are correct. I do not have the ability to shift. Are we okay. not on a new day yet? Nope. Because you had the did, wargs. Did I shift then... during the wargs? Did I can't I remember. I don't think nope. I did. You mm. never did. Mm -mm. Never I shifted did? Okay. during the last watch. But you did no, shift during the last watch, yes. Uh, uh, yes. Maybe that's where uh, I... Okay, then, then you probably didn't. So, yeah, you can shift then. So, go ahead and roll. All right. Yeah. Straight roll. I'm going to shift. Uh, I'll have advantage for this. That's right, you do. Because I am a wild hunt shifter. Uh, 14. 14. Okay. It is... Boring as fuck. Nothing happens. Um, no one moves. Just some gentle snoring from various different tents. Uh, at one point, Rebu kind of you hear rustling, and Rebu like kind of unlatches his tent and like bleary eye just like slaps his hand around, grabs a water skin, takes a swig, caps it, and then just slides back into his tent like a man possessed. <laughs> but beyond that, the night is entirely uneventful for you. Mm. Then Otho will shift back into his more humanoid form, uh, and he will approach Gaius for his watch. Okay. Mr. Agni. Uh, uh, uh. Time has come for your watch. Eyes just, like, light open, just, like, throws himself back uh, onto his back and then just like kicks himself back up <sighs> all right very well then nothing nothing so far at least as far as i know hmm. uneventful i say all right mm. the fort well, is safe for now anyway well you head off to sleep i'll get you all up when it's time to go indeed good night mr agni you will, though. Same to you. Stands up on the fucking ledge of Fort Dort Z and just, like, gargoyles perches. <laughs> like Batman? <laughs> yeah, I'm just a Batman. Like, just Batman with a fucking, like, deliriously stupid, hazy smile on his face. All right, go and roll perception check for me. With disadvantage, because it is still technically dark. Haha, <laughs> I have a lantern. Oh, okay, then just straight, straight check, then. Hee <laughs> hee, I have a funny lantern. 
Funny lantern go bright. Oh, oh. Natural one. Funny lantern not turn when on. We Spend were... most of time preoccupied trying to turn it on. I hate this. <laughs> Interestingly we... enough, as you kind of look out and you bring up the lantern, you almost blind yourself because there is a fog <laughs> that has permeated across the field. Peppers have taught me for this. <laughs> <laughs> And Gaius, as you kind of keep your ears up for the sounds around you, nothing occurs. And I need someone to roll me three d20, please. I'll do it. Probably best if I don't. Oh, no. Oh, that's a natural one. There's a one in there. Oh, uh, hopefully that means no rain. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. The fog waylays into a beautiful sunny day oh. that becomes very windy very quickly as you all begin to roll up camp it is like a gusty april day packing the tents is a nightmare because the wind kind of buffets and bellows this way and that ah what's oh, it's Wimby. I'm fucking Wimby. <laughs> it's fucking Wimby. Meanwhile, Iskan has no hair or feathers or anything to whip in the wind. So yeah, but your maps are at a like... risk here. You ever, you ever carry portfolio through the wind? It he sucks. He has tubes strapped to the inside <laughs> that... of his jacket. He is prepped for this. That's your jacket's know. getting buffeted, my guy. I hate to his, tell you. Leather his straps, head flaps baby. are just... <laughs> Mark, don't, don't. Don't tempt God, okay? E Let's just say it. Eastgan starts ham boning to the sky. <laughs> <laughs> As you all collect your things, uh, the axe beaks are just like imagine a uh, like imagine a hair dryer just blasting a feather boa. <laughs> that is the current state of affairs for uh, for the poor axe beaks as they are getting buffeted by these gales. Imagine you guys manage. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. I was no, just gonna no, say. Go I was just gonna say. I imagine they've all got the exact same squinty eyes. They do. Yeah, they are all like squinty eyed and squawking their discontent. Except for Ex Walker, who stares at the wind <laughs> in great defiance. <laughs> it actually, and, and, interestingly enough, they're all hiding behind Pazuzu because he's a wall and he's breaking the wind. He looks un. You want, you want to know what the best part is? Is that the wind is so strong that you actually see Pazuzu's face for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> But you guys managed to collect your items, your tents, wrap them up, you know, roll up your bedrolls, collect your things, and put them on your axe beaks and mount up, and you are heading northward, I'm, I'm assuming. Um, real quick, uh, uh, magically delicious breakfast for myself and guys. You got it. Food. All right, and as you guys take a look, a loving look at Fort Dort, is there anything <laughs> you want to do before you leave? I was gonna um, say build a little sand castle, but that does, that's not gonna happen here now, will it? I, there, here's a serious question for you: Is the wind strong enough that it's like blowing? It's like eroding the wall. Uh, yeah. Oh. Oh no. It's a lost cause, folks. <laughs> Otho just gives a, a little salute to Fort Dort. Like to the imagine a little tornado just up. sucks it up and it disappears. A tornado. <laughs> Hold on. A little air elemental. Know. Yeah, a little air elemental just comes <laughs> down. Just eats it like blah, 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 and then floats up back into the sky. He flips us the bird on its way out. Oh, All right. Dogs. All right. So as you guys mount up, you guys take off northward. Um it is like driving a little tiny car in a windstorm. There is some Ooh. steering issues. Um there are times where there's just like a blast of wind. And you even risk falling off of your mounts at times. You have to clench your thighs so hard to stay on these birds. And the birds themselves, like, like probably the only one who's not having too much issue is probably Pazuzu and Dawn. Because Dawn is so tiny yeah. that there's enough, like, there's enough, <laughs> like, fortification around you that you're fine. Like, there's enough wind Dawn's breaking. Dawn's fucking tailgating I'm, us. I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm, so I'm sorry. I now just imagine that one cartoon of the, the duck Pokemon. 
Oh, Storm can't get us here. Steps away from Pazuzu. <laughs> <laughs> Just fucking vanishes. But as you guys take off northward very quickly, within a little while, you begin to see the large central town of Quincunx begin to crest over the horizon. Oh boy. I mean, I got nothing. I'm just, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm ready to keep going. Yeah. All right. As you guys head down with the axe speaks and make your way to the front gates, you see various guards kind of looking through people's things. Uh, and as you approach, the axe speaks kind of come to a stop. And Connor, you're breathing in your microphone really bad. I'm just, sorry. Um, and as you crest over and make your way, you see the front gate of Queen Kunks currently. Um, quite a few people, actually, surprisingly. You see a lot of individuals making their way through. It is a very, you know, despite the, the wind, it is actually a pretty nice traveling day. Um, and as you guys make your way up to the gate and dismount, you see two less armored guards kind of approaching. goes, hey, old friends, making your way through? Yeah, and just need to stop by. Where are you heading after you go through Quincunks? Apple Bottom Fields. I see. This is there, I see. Very well. Anything you would like to declare? Any magical items we should be aware of? Uh, no. yes. And Eastgun's gonna pull out Mira's staff. Oh, I think I remember you. And he points up to towards you, Eastgun. You're fine. It's good. Um, um I've, I've, okay. I've got this quill. Uh, it just writes when you talk to it. it it's nothing crazy. Okay. Yeah, no worries. Go on in. Wow, we got the hand wave. Yeah. It's Queen Kunks, bro. <laughs> they remember you too as being just adventurers, so just like customs. Yeah, this in is where the guild office is, right? Yeah, right, Connor. Do we have to report? <laughs> Actually, that's a good question. Would would maybe hopefully East Gun would know. Are we supposed to like report a completed quest? Uh, Wh which one? We Eto. haven't completed we a quest. Did a, we, we did. We transported. Some people from one location to another. Yeah, oh, you we already got paid for, for that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm just asking: Are we supposed to like keep tabs with the Adventurers Guild that that's been handled, or? No, they just give you people to like. You just go to them, and be like, "Hey, we want to do this," and they give you people. Basically, here, it's like a... here's your job. Now, fuck off. Here, here, people go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Basically, I'll... how that works is that if you ended up, like, robbing them and, like, leaving them for death and they were to find their way back and be like, hey, these guys who you brought in, like, killed us, then they would hunt you down. <laughs> they killed us. Yeah, we, we're dead. We got better, <laughs> though. <laughs> yeah, if, if, if everybody's if the, doing it. If the, like, yellow floating question mark above their heads doesn't appear, then they know something's up. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just say above Something. game, gang, um... I really don't have anything of great importance besides just traveling to get the main objective done. That's just me. Yeah, ditto. Uh, we could. Uh, I will. Say, I will say above game that Kai would want to steal Otho to investigate because this is the town where I believe the person is wrongfully imprisoned. Yes. I, yes. I would want to. Kai would definitely go say. with Otho to try to investigate that while they're here to see who they could talk to and potentially yeah, maybe talk to that prisoner by using Otho's name as a leverage point. And the fact that we're working for Harland. Yeah, East Gun would want to tag along as well. Oh, I guess I'll tag along too. <laughs> Everybody's <laughs> coming. Everybody's yeah, coming. Wait, this is our last chance you guys not to, to check come, on this I'm... quest before we yeah. leave the country. So, mm. Where'd everyone go? I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> it's long right, So, reaches so where screen. are you going specifically? So uh, I, if, I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, this is a guard post, right? There's a lot of guards here. This is like a... Uh, uh, that was Maddie Amond. That's Maddie Amond, yeah. Okay. Maddie Amond is like is in soldier prison town. Here, right? the, uh, this is just yes. like a town. Yeah. Okay. So I think the, the, the play is to talk to whoever controls the jails here, which would be whoever the captain of the guard is in this city or whoever is lieutenant or whoever happens to be I around. It's lieutenant uh, let's avoid let's avoid the lieutenant because Lieutenant Warden Hall is the one we're investigating. Yeah. yeah. We're worried about who, whether or not they might be involved. So... The uh, they're they're going to know the minute we go to talk to them. There should be somebody over Captain their head. Captain Johannesson. The Captain Johannesson. There you go. Johannesson was the name. Was. I have so Jonathan. we would like to talk to them if they have an office and see if we could get more information on what the situation is. And then potentially if we could speak to the prisoner. 
if if we could. And if we have to, we'll leverage Otho's name. Okay. Where do you go? Do you know where this is? The, I'm, I'm asking you, is there a guard post somewhere, like a headquarters in the city? And if not, is there somebody that would have information on that? Is the secondary could be or... figured out. You'd have to figure out where to go, though. Uh, okay. I'm going to ask Rebu. Is there a bar or a tavern or a guard anywhere? We, we can ask Rebu. We, we mean, met we Rebu here, so they probably know the town fairly well. But it's Rebu. Yeah, you can ask Rebu. <laughs> uh, before Jeez. leaving Rebu, because Rebu's going to stable your axe speaks, which, by the way, uh, silver everybody. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Okay. My silver. I'm going to sneeze. Can I, can I give you half an Electrum instead? She <laughs> have <laughs> So I've had it up to here with the Electrum sass. You, really, you know Connor's <laughs> allergic to that. Why did you make him sneeze? Sorry, I'm sorry. Uh. Rebu kind of like kind of stroke runs a hand over the top of his head and goes, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. I only do business in Quincungs. I avoid the guards as much as possible. Not to say that I'm, uh, you know, a shifty criminal. type, but I'm not a criminal. I'm not a criminal. He points a finger at you guys. <laughs> but um, I'm sure they have a guard post. You just have to ask somebody. You know, ask a guard who's walking around or go to a tavern. Kind of shrugs. Makes sense to me. But um, be it for me to question your methods, but do you think it's wise to approach them when this person, you know, you're trying to investigate someone who's in the guard? I mean, I'm just saying, if you're going to approach an ass, just if it were me, maybe keep your intentions on the down low. Well, we're you not exactly obviously not going in there and telling them everything. Yeah. Not right away. Well, just be careful. Uh, should we head to the guild then? Ask around there, maybe? I suppose so. All right, follow me. Okay. I'm going to go. And away we go. And away we yeah. go. All right. You guys make your way through Quinn Kunks, the, the very tightly packed uh, center spot with its large bell tower, if you recall, um, being there. Um, this is a town proper. It's big. It's not as big, obviously, as Martorallo proper, but it is for what it is reasonably large. You make your way up the slatted wood catwalks, eventually finding yourself in front of that rather egregious-looking guild building with the stuffed heads and the sort of log cabin aesthetic. Uh, but as you make your way inside, it is raucous within. You see various individuals bearing weapons and swords and bows, long robed individuals with wide-brimmed hats, Various individuals of various different creeds kind of mulling about, talking amongst themselves, arguing over a payment with a receptionist. It is home sweet home. Well, I guess we better ask away. All right. I will find a, a guardly looking person. Okay. You kind of walk in. Um... I would say roll a pers you know what actually roll an insight check. That would be probably the best thing. Insight. Uh, wait, wait, I wanna I wanna do the the thing. Sorry. Brain. Um guidance, if I may. You got it. Okay. Okay. Add that D4, sorry. Oh, that was almost a nineteen. Uh, oh, oh six. Okay. Uh, you don't really see anyone here who's wearing a land guard uniform. It's kind of like just mostly adventures. Um, you walk up to a guy who I could only describe as being shredded. Um, he looks similar to one of the gentlemen you met that was guarding that merchant guy who was moving by foot, if you recall. Hmm. Um, and his arms are kind of crossed, and he looks like he's, like, scarred on the face. 
uh, very like stark eyes, like almost like an emerald green eyes with kind of darker auburn hair kind of shaved at the side. There's like a pattern that's been cut in clearly with like a knife or a razor or something. You're not sure. And as you approach him, he kind of looks down at you and then kind of looks away. Good day to you, sir. Good day. I was wondering if you could help me with something. See, we're new to Queen Kung's, and uh, we were wondering if you might be able to point us somewhere. And I'll, because... I'll sort of, I'll sort of like, uh, I'll sort of like twirl a, a silver piece between my fingers as I'm saying this as well. Roll a persuasion check. Oh! <laughs> oh. Uh, dice! That's a ten. He looks over and you see him kind of yell out. And he speaks in a language you've never heard before. Like, he just starts kind of like, speaks in this strange dialect. And mm. you notice a woman come over and she's wearing essentially like, kind of like a, like a, almost like a nun-esque cowl with sort of a symbol on the front where like the headband would be. It kind of bears a, a symbol. And it has like these beads that kind of run down the sides. And she kind of comes over and looks towards him and looks towards you and goes, Ah, I see. I, you are. How can I assist you? I just need some directions. I was wondering if you could point me towards the constabulary office. Constabulary? Uh, the, the guard headquarters in Queen Kung's. Ah, uh, guards, yes. Sorry, I'm not aware of the previous word that you used. I'm not um, native here. Um, I believe the guard keep is in the uh, western edge of town. It's a large stone building. You can tell there's a training yard that leads out through the walls. Ah, I see. Uh, you're not native, so I don't suppose you would know who would be the person to talk to. Not at all. Unless you intend to hand in a bounty, I do not recommend it. And why is that? They don't tend to waste time on individuals unless there is something immediate that must be concluded. Really? Just from my experience. Hmm. Monty, quick question. Mm hmm Is there any check that could be made to identify the symbol on her brow? Go for it, yeah. Uh, which one? Uh, this would be a religion check, and this is going to oh, have to be a very high check. I get plus two and trained. 21? 21. Oh, shit. You recognize some of the iconography. Um, a lot of it seems to be of, of sort of beasts, but also like weaponry, but it's kind of like symbolic. The main sigil you don't quite recognize in the middle um, which appears to be that of, like, it looks almost like a sort of, like, knotted pattern, uh, and that you don't recognize at all. You get the sense that this is something to do with Vetrion, you think? Uh, Vetrion being the god of might and valor and, mm. and combat and, and mm. you know, strength. Um, and you watch as the man who you talked to first, Otho, kind of arms crossed, looks down to her and begins to speak in that tongue again. And she speaks back to him very briefly and kind of passively waves her hand, like, calm down. And he, like, kind of, <sighs> kind of seems a little annoyed. And she turns back to him and she goes. Is is that not something I I could identify what sort of language they're speaking? Or is this, like, a regional dialect sort of you thing? You have no idea what that is. You've never heard it before. Okay. And she turns back and she goes, I'm sorry. I, I Again, I am not known here. And most of the time, the people are very... Um, What's the word? Stuffy? I see. They're stuffy. But um, perhaps you'll have more luck than us. Usually the people of the eastern, uh, well, western lands do not like to entertain us most of the time. Hmm. I see. Uh, can I, I, I look the both of them over. They seem to know each other. Is there like any sort of iconography I could see as to what region they may be from. They're clearly foreign. 
They are foreign. Um, the man looks a lot like the kind of similar in not just build, but like attire to the guards that one merchant guy had. And you remember him boasting that they were Delvarian guards that are like really good. Right. Um, you're not sure if she is, but since they speak the same language, you could har you could maybe harbor a guess. Um, but he he looks like he's Delvarian. You're not sure about her. She seems maybe she could be Delvarian, but. Her dress is much different, given that it's probably religious in nature. Mm. Uh, well, you've already helped me quite a deal for pointing me in the right direction. Thank you so much. Uh, of course. Sister? No, we are not related. <laughs> in, uh, <laughs> yeah, you, I forgive I me, you've like got... Uh, you've got... Of the look of someone of the cloth. Of the cloth? Well, I'm wearing cloth, yes. Oh my god. I love it. Thank you for, thank you for your time. I'll, I'll slip three silver into her palm. And she takes it, and she looks a little perplexed, and looks up at the other man, and the man looks down, and she speaks to him again, and he goes, kind of gives you, like, he, he leans his head back and gives you a look, like, as if to say, like, if that was an insult, it better not have been. Like, he kind of gives you that look, like, I'm going to assume good intentions, but, you know, just in case I'm going to shoot you a look, kind of get you mm. that look. Both the yeah. Otho out here like, I should go. <laughs> this is my favorite shopping quinkungs. No! <laughs> I should go. All right. So as you make your right way out and you regroup with your companions, you're aware of where the guard station is. The question is, do we want to go there? Because that sounded ominous. Yeah. See, just above game, I didn't want to pursue anything too hard until we actually had information about where the goblins actually got it. And I figured we could possibly get that if we once we got to the bridge near Apple Bottom Fields. Because we know... The problem is we would have to double back to do anything with that information. It might be worth it. We don't know. We're on a little bit of a time crunch. We're not. We're really not. There's. We've already been told that there's no time crunch to any of this. No, more I'll tell you if the there's a crime. The longer crime we crunch. take, the more likely it is that we're going to see more assassins and more interruptions from Wormtongue. Won't that just be so, inevitable anyway? I, I think what he's saying is you will limit the amount that they can do that the quicker you get to Eastonville and fix stuff. Yeah. Okay. That that being said, I think Gaijin's on the right path. Oh. I think I think it would be worth at least going to the bridge to find that information. But we could always scope out the place and see what they're all about. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. that's more. And we're not getting like too deep into things right now. We just want a little bit of information so we can. I, I think it's been made very clear that approaching that. them could be a problem by multiple NPCs. So I think the yeah, wise play is just let's go scope it out. Let's spend the night here. I think there was a magic shop here, too, that I was going to go to with Gaius because he had mentioned wanting scrolls. So we can do all that stuff and then hit the road and head to the bridge. Okay. Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Would like magic, please. Okay. So you guys are going to head to the, basically, the guard quarters, essentially. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. You guys make your way through town. Uh, kind of ducking by carts and avoiding the myriad of, of buyers and sellers and marketplaces. Kind of looking up to the curtain and tapestry of clothing hanging from lines between houses. And eventually, through the cobblestone streets, you find yourself in front of a very proper looking building. Uh, flanked by two, not like knights per se, like Madiamon, but two guards who are reasonably well equipped with spears. Uh, and you guys approach. Hesitantly. <laughs> okay. As you guys approach, one of the guards kind of steps forward, a sort of lanky looking human man, and he turns, he goes, Are you here to collect a bounty? What business do you have today? Looks to Otho. Yeah, looks to Otho. Uh, collecting a bounty? No. Um, the, the, we, there was a bounty board back at the, back at the Adventurer's Guild, right? There was, yes. Yeah. Uh, yes, we, we were just sort of directed here. We, uh... 
we re uh we heard some things recently. Uh we heard that you have one uh t -t 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 scrolling through my notes. You're looking for the the prisoner? Yes, the, the real soaker. Oh, Drake Finnegan. In your uh, in your cells, is that true? That would be of the warden's jurisdiction. I I wouldn't yes, be and certain. Who, and who is the warden? Uh, that would be Warden Clark. Warden Clark. Is there any chance we could speak to him? Do you have a schedule appointed meeting with Warden Clark? I wasn't aware we needed one. You are, yeah. How do we go I about see. doing that? Well, you'd have to get a point of reference, um, a representative. Um, are you a friend of this individual, or are you... Uh, may I ask what your intentions are here? Because we don't just let anybody meet with prisoners. Unless you're next to kin, but I don't know if you are, because... <laughs> you know that. <laughs> I, like, are you profiling um, me? This man is I'm, profiling I'm, me. I'm a riddle wrapped in an enigma. I know it might seem a bit unconventional, but we we wanted to see him on his wife's behalf. Just check in. She can't come personally. Right. Well, unfortunately, um. Protocol does not allow for sentimental excuses to breach security. Um, so you're going to need a letter of reference from essentially someone, um, whether that be a representative of this individual who's been imprisoned, that be of a legal counsel, um, member of upper guard registrar, or a reference from a high-ranking god of this town. Um, and without those, unfortunately, I cannot let you in. Easton's going to lean over and kind of whisper into Otho's ear. I thought the whole idea was to take advantage of your name. Just tell him who you are. Yes. Yes, I suppose we have to. Oh, someone of authority? You mean like an ocean lord? That would do it, eh? Oh, well, you will be pleased to learn that I am Otho Valentinius. Son of Brutus, ocean lord of Matarallo. He blinks twice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, um... Then... Is that sufficient standing for you, sir? I'm a little confused. Kind of scratches the back of his <laughs> neck. I mean, you could have gotten... If you are, as you say, the son of Brutus Valentinius, you can easily get a letter of reference from the Bandage House, your father's estate here. I imagine oh. I've heard of this. <laughs> no, you haven't. Because this You're is the like... first time Connor is hearing of this. <laughs> you, um, you are aware of your father's infirmary in town, yes? Father's infirmary in town? Well, of course. Well, roll a, that's all. Roll a deception check, and he's going to roll an insight. <laughs> Mm. Can I wait? Can I can I aid him? Can I give him no, advantage? No, not at all. Oh, damn it! Boom, boom, uh. boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Don't boom, bend, boom. Connor. Damn it! That's an eleven. By one, you pass. Oh, oh man! Because <laughs> he rolled a ten and has no bonus. Oh boy! Good God! Yeah, listen. Um, go there first. Um. Mr. Brutus Valentinius, and um, get your letter Otho there. Otho Valentinius. If... Brutus Otho. is my father. Right. Um, Can I insight that's... him? <laughs> sure, yeah, go for it. <laughs> he might be dumb. <laughs> he guy... might be dumb or just not familiar with anything at all. I'm, I'm actually a little suspicious of this. What is air, sir? I don't know who the Valentinius people is. 
What's a Valentinius? Uh, that's a 17 insight. He is not... He's not blessed with significant intelligence, but he uh, is of, of, of an average in intelligence. Um, he yeah. seems more like he's just trying to kind of get rid of you so he doesn't have to deal with you anymore, because he's just like... But also at the same time, like, in the case if you are who you say you are, he is being somewhat polite. But also at the same time, is just like... He's like, you're kind of dumb yourself. Like, it's you're both of you are inciting that you're both kind of stupid in a special <laughs> way. Sir, yeah. sir, I don't care if you're the district manager of Walmart. This is a Wegmans, please. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, yeah. Oh. Um, I mean, that's that's all I can do for you, sir. But you're going to have to get the right, um, the right paperwork. Ugh, the, the letter that, uh, Harland gave us. Does it have a, like a wax seal on it? It does, but that was specifically for Lynn. I know. Uh, <laughs> I'm just wondering if they're dumb enough to just buy it if I show so them. So I the had seal. the exact same thought, Connor. <laughs> I'm glad we're on the same wavelength, but I at least wanted to do this other thing first. But I but am also yeah, I, above game. Chris Zito also worries that this dumb asshole is going to take his finger across the top and rip that shit open. Right. Uh, he is not going to break the seal of an ocean lord. That is not going to happen by this schmuck. Well, he said you have to have a letter granting you access. So he would want to check the letter to make sure that he that's unfortunately what it's would for. want to read it. <laughs> no, the schmuck after him can check it. Not this schmuck in particular. Why don't we just go get a letter? Uh, yeah, I think it's, we it's go check town. out this place in town that was just mentioned. Otho, Otho is actually interested because he, he didn't realize there was an establishment run by his father in here. So. Uh, let's do it. Uh, let's go to Dad Hospital. <laughs> dad Dad's, Hospital. Dad, dad, dad hospital. hospital. Dad Hospital General. Where 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 do you hurt, Sport? <laughs> this is where Doctor Pipples works. Do you guys start to leave? <laughs> I suppose so. Yeah. yeah. As you guys take off to leave, the guard goes, "Um, you're going the wrong way." Taking the scenic route. Control <laughs> deception again. Where do we God go? damn it. <laughs> Where do we go in this fucking town? <laughs> Wait, that's a perception check. Uh, per deception, not perception. Yeah, deception. Yeah, uh, different. Yeah, different. 19. Okay. Oh, um, my mistake. And have a good day. You as well, sir. You as well. Just having a massive idiot day to day. I, I'm so confused. This is why I don't talk. <laughs> yeah, well, it is their job to be thorough. Uh, hey, uh, Otho. Mm hmm. Don't mm hmm me like that, like you already know because you do. Would you mind if I just like went to a magic shop real quick while you did this? Is that cool with everybody? That's fine. All right. uh, not at all. No, we don't want to stick together. That's kind of why I'm saying it. I'm not just going to run off. If you want me to come, I'll come. I just... It's not like we're in any danger here. Uh, we cover... I'm not so sure about that. The sniper on the roof is like, damn it, they know, and then disappears. <laughs> <laughs> you just hear running on the, foot, on the rooftop. <laughs> <laughs> they know we're here. Pull out. <laughs> <laughs> They're on to us. Is, why is they Jason, sent Jason Statham, Statham here? Statham? Jesus. It's me. Oh, I'm a, it's I'm serious. A He's a I've goblin. I've come for me sausage Nigels. <laughs> oh, wait. I thought this was the Unpredictables. My bad. <laughs> My bad. Wrong game. I'll be back. Sorry, you playing the party? Uh, uh, above game, does that, does, do you want to keep everybody together? Uh, or? I think we should stick together. We, we don't have to go to either of those shops immediately. We can do both before we have to turn in for the night. Right, Monty? Presumably? I mean, yeah. I mean, you can try. Yeah, if you want to keep the party together, I'm cool with it. All right. So where would you guys like to go first? Uh, well, we know where... Do we, do we, know, we know where the merchant center is. We're like... That's where the adventuring guild was. So... Yeah. Presumably the magic shop is somewhere in there. I would I would recommend we go there first because at least we know where that is. 
And while we're there, we can ask people in the area where this place that we're looking for is. Okay. Which I didn't get the name of. I hope said, somebody wrote it down. We set our stupid to zero with someone brand new. <laughs> the Bandage House is what they the called it. Okay. You're not sure if that's his actual name or if it's a nickname, but that's what the, the guard said it was. It was the Bandage Boo House. Boo-hoo House. <laughs> the Boo-hoo House. what the common people know it as. Let's hope um, it's not a brothel. Don't say his name. The Ouchie Man. <laughs> Did someone call my name? Uh, actually, easy enough to find a magic shop. There's actually, like, advertisements pasted on, like, certain sections of the walls throughout the city. Um, and one does stand out to you, where the penmanship is rather nice and is unfaded and seems fairly fresh. Uh, which is... Hold on. Uh, Olive's Charm is a magic oh. shop that seems to stand out to you. That sounds like something I've used. What an olive charm? No, not a specific. What the hell is an olive charm? I I was looking for illusion. I figured this place might be the best fit. You would know better than I would. Holy shit, I would. That's terrifying. I go inside. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You guys take off the advertisement and follow the directions that are written very, very well. Like, it's very detailed and, like, gives you, like, the, like, it's like a Google, like, um, <laughs> it's literally the poster's location and it gives you, like, Google, um, the old map like, quest, like, map quest GPS, like, turn left here, turn right here. And eventually you see kind of squished between two residents. A very narrow, tall shop with a almost like a chimney that is just breathing out like a sort of uh, sparkly pink smoke that just kind of is like slowly rising from the roof. The front door has a set of stairs that walk up and hanging uh, on above the door is a swinging wooden sign that has the an olive with like a little heart over top of it like right in the middle of the all like where the pit is it's like a heart instead and it's like engraved into the sign and the word olive's charm in cursive is written beneath it uh in the window you see uh various different wizards hats you see various different books you see a myriad of potions um and you guys head in yeah i do all right why not as you all head inside, the first thing that you notice is that this location is bigger on the inside than it appears on the outside. Uh, the moment you the moment you walk in, there are about five or six shelves that run the length of this building. It's almost like a library. Um, you see various glass cases, large locked. That's the wrong shop. That's a blacksmith shop. <laughs> oh, Olive. Very charming. You see various tapestries depicting uh, wizard battles and griffins like being summoned forth and, and images of, of devils being trapped inside of books. Like there's sort of like these, these strange myriad of tapestries. Uh, and as you make your way inside, you actually notice a rather uh, rich being operative, but a, a rather well-to-do woman kind of making her way out. Um, and she kind of goes, oh, excuse me, and makes her way out of the shop. And you hear a voice go, uh, take care, have a good day. Uh, oh, is someone else here? Oh, I'm at the counter if you need me. Scoot on over to the counter. God, I hope it's pointed hat. You see, <laughs> you see a gnome. A gnome standing on top of a large stool that seems to have like a lever on the side. You know the man in the moon? Imagine that, but it's his hair. So his hair kind of comes forward into a curl that kind of curls forward, and then he has a beard that does the exact same thing on the opposite end. It's like he's his head looks like the letter C. Oh, it's that one boss from Elden Ring. Fuck yeah. Today's episode of The Unexpectables is brought to you by the letter C. He's wearing a set of rose-tinted, like, round glasses that kind of sit above his nose, kind of hiding his eyes a little bit. Uh, and you see in front of him are just papers, like various different ledger papers and things like that. And he kind of adjusts his glass and goes, oh my, quite a, a myriad gang of characters. Um, 
Hello, pleasure to meet you. Uh, my name is Answer. I'd be happy to assist you today. How may I help? Hello, Answer. Answer? Answer. 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 Hello, Answer. I'm in the market for some illusion scrolls. Some illusion scrolls. Very well. I think I have. And he kind of, you, you watch as he hits that lever and he goes, eek, eek, eek. And each time he like lowers more. <laughs> He's got Maybe a ratcheting one, footstool. That's actually kind of cool. He kind of disappears behind the counter. You hear some footsteps. And you see him walk behind. And he goes, um, any particular spells that you are looking for? Or would you like a, um, a pick of a litter? One that changes my appearance. So, uh, a scroll of disguise self. That sounds perfect. Very well. Let's see. Uh, disguise self. Give me a second. Pull that up myself and figure out how much this is going to be. Let me Here we go. Uh, I have about three scrolls of disguise self, and you watch as he climbs over, steps back onto his stool, then <laughs> back up to the full height, uh, and he sets <laughs> off three purple uh, parchment scrolls, and he goes, um, each of those will be a hundred gold each. How was the conversion in platinum? Ten. Uh, ten. Ah! Uh, fuck. Remember, we're poor. I mean, we're not poor, but we're not rich. Guy is just like the his smile and optimism gone. Just, like, ah, looks, at, looks at the sure. scrolls and then just like gives a sour face, like shrugs in disbelief and just goes, I've wasted your time. I unfortunately can't afford these. Oh, I'm sorry, young man. I apologize. Magic items are quite difficult to create, but um, I do. Uh, I can give a discount if you have any goods to trade, magical, curio, or otherwise. I'm looking at my things. Please wait. Please. While he's looking through his Please pockets, hold. is there anything? Is there anything else I can help the rest of you with? Ah, uh, I'm fine. I'm just here with friends. Very good. Very good. Um, and, and you? Looks towards you out, though. Oh, I'm just... here with my companions, just, uh, perusing your magical artifacts. Say, um... What, uh, classification of spellcaster would you consider yourself? I am, um, I, I, I'd like to say that I'm versed in most different arcane practices. Um, if I had to say my most, um, I'm, I'm more of a writer, if anything, if that makes sense. I am very quick and very fast at making scrolls, specifically. Yes, and, and these, these scroll making abilities, how precisely did you... Uh, come to be able to do this, some sort of innate gift. Uh, I was studies. Uh, I studied quite a bit. Um, I found myself as the apprentice of a wizard in Mortarello proper for quite a few years. After which, I sequestered myself away and and focused on my studies through practice. I, I did some adventuring in my time, so I'm aware of your um your sort of work. And he kind of gives you all a nod because he's very aware of what you are. Like you're all like a misfit band, and he seems to acknowledge that. Um, in my time as an adventurer, I earned quite a bit of coin to open the shop up. And of course, mm. I'm not exactly getting any younger. So um, since then, I've been kind of um, working from here. I see. If you are intrigued by learning magic, the best thing I can teach you is look at all different places. Travel the world. You can find the spellcasters in the north are much different than the spellcasters to the west. By the way, I got nothing. You can, I, I just go ahead. <laughs> And uh, what about you, sir? And he looks towards you, Kai. Anything I can help you with? Uh, yeah. I actually... Can I get some, uh... Magical ink and paper for creating scrolls and other such things? Certainly. What, uh, how many scrolls are you wishing to make and of what spell type? Uh, I need 300 gold worth of supplies, if you could do that. You got it. And you watch the... <laughs> and then drops off the stool and 
takes off into the back, and you hear a bunch of uh, kind of shelves opening and closing, and he goes, any preference for color? Would you like just standard parchment? Uh, yeah, that'd be great. You got it. And you watch as he walks over, and uh, he's got in his hand just a huge stack of paper and like a couple bottles and vials of ink, and you watch as he steps on top of his uh, stool again, and without touching it, the stool's little little lever goes eek, 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 and re- lifts him back up and he places <laughs> on the table and goes begins to wrap it up and he goes and will that be everything for you young man uh yeah that'll do it all right also, there uh, you big, go. big big fan of you scroll wizards you guys are really cool oh thank you <laughs> we do good work it's very important well, you would not imagine the spells that were almost lost to history if it weren't for neurotic wizards in ancient times <laughs> Uh, Kai is going to look at Gaius as he buys the supplies and just kind of give him a nod. Uh, and he is then going to uh, pocket all of the supplies. And we'll drop the giant bag of 300 gold on the table. Thank you kindly. He, he begins to count pocket. the coin. And he sets it aside. Anything else for you? Um, are you, my tall blue fellow? Huh? Are you interested in anything magical today? Uh, I don't think so. Actually, yes, he totally is. Do you, by any chance, and Kai is going to pull out the Druidic book that he has, do you have any books similar to this, but with more information on Druidic magic in particular? Oh, um, may I take a look? Yeah, please. And I'm going to slide the book that, that, I think it was from, uh, what was this town called? Point oh, Hat, yeah. Goodness. Point Hat, yeah, Pointy Hat. But you hand the gnome the book and he goes, oh, okay, it's kind of heavy. <laughs> and he slams oh, on the table no. and flips it over. He kind of strokes awesome. his... He runs his hand through his beard, including the loop at the end. Like, his hand just goes... Whoop, like, almost mm-hmm. like a skateboard. And he kind of runs his hand Hotly. through and goes... Huh, how rare! A book like this is not very common. I'm curious as to where you procured such a thing. Druids are not <laughs> known to set down their knowledge to pen and paper, let alone let it be happened. I'm, I'm afraid I don't have anything of this nature. A book of this type is again very rare indeed i would advise if you have interest in druidic magic to seek out a druid they are willing usually to teach those who are willing and who respect nature but i'm afraid Uh, i have nothing to assist in that regard do uh, do, do you know if there's do you know if there's any in the town or nearby towns have you have you met one i have not no i'm very sorry i traveled with one for a while neurotic woman oh goodness you ate a carrot and you might as well killed her own mother but um I'm afraid I don't know immediately. I'm very sorry. And Martyralian druids tend to keep to the coastlines. Shoot. Hearthland, sorry, though, you are near Hearthland if you're willing to travel quite a ways and make your way through. Though traveling to Hearthland nowadays is quite difficult. Uh, East and Vale currently in the state that it's in, and the Death Road, <laughs> as the name suggests, not very safe to take. Um, this... I actually, I, I hear it's, uh, it's about to take a turn for the better, so I guess we'll see. Oh, is this it? druid you traveled with, what was her name? Oh, Thistle or something, some herb name. We didn't travel for very long, and she was a, a half-elven woman, and oh my goodness, if you think bards are full of themselves. Oh. Um, I, 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 I wouldn't know. Otha looks to the camera. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Um, it's actually something I could use. Um, I'm looking for anything such as um, uh, s- special like bones or mark sticks. Something for divination magic. Oh, divining bones. I might have something like that. Give me one moment. Does that have to be a specific type of bone? Creature bone? Does that have to be dog bone? Dragon uh, bone? Is it uh, any kind of bone? He's, he's, he's accordioning in on himself because... This is this is supposed to be of the sacred religion, and all this all this bone talk is is making him squish. Uh, if you have any uh, trinkets of, of sort, uh, I, I've heard there's like sticks or or uh, cards or something maybe not bone. Uh, if, if it's got a nice little stone on it, that would be great. Oh, worship of the sun! I think I have just the thing for you. And he kind of steps off and he goat walks bones. Over. What? <laughs> <laughs> He comes back and he places down what looks to be like, they look like very large, like almost knuckle bones, almost. Mm-hmm. There you go. Lion bones. Oh. 
Oh. Mayo looks to the camera. I must consider my text to see if this is sacrilegious. <laughs> I have been informed that worshippers of Orin, their god, is oftentimes depicted as a lion. And so lion bones, I thought in my brain just now, could be very, very efficient. I suppose that'd be the case, so long as it's not like you're slaying a lion. I, I, you know what? It's, it's fine. It's fine. Um, oh, these are ethically sourced lion bones. Ethically sourced <laughs> just don't creature I don't dire need monster this femur bones. anymore. You can take it. <laughs> we we, oh. we we have we have a farm in the rolling hills where all the lions are <laughs> I'm gonna stop. You know that that's fine, that's fine. Um I, I suppose that's twenty-five gold? That'll be twenty-five gold, yes. Okay. He kind of begs. He begs one, at the bones for you. One platinum is ten, uh, one platinum is ten gold? Is ten gold, yeah. Okay, so six for is it, is it Mufasa brand lion bone? Oh God, <laughs> Mark, no! <laughs> he said uh, Scar brand. No, I mean oh. that's not ethical. All right, that's I, I hand over. I hold. Right there. I hand over the the money. There you go. And here are your bones. And he hands you a little pouch of of lion bones, essentially. All right, thank you. It's a little weird, but I, I guess it'll work. Oh, it's not that weird. The leather workers give it to me every now and again. We have a bit of a deal. Ah, you consider fine. yourself lucky. I've like heard that some people divine things with intestines. Oh, that's barbaric! No, it's not. And yet. I know, I know. Don't don't you talk shit about my Gram Gram's abilities. Alright, I'm sorry. It just <laughs> I, pat him, it... I pat him on the head. I'm kidding. I'm sorry, entrails just give me the skeeves. <laughs> but yet you work with them in food, don't you? Well, yes, but I, I suppose it's context. You know, you, it's, you don't it's see. Not, it's not a whole, ch a whole like unprepped chicken, just a giant entrail. No, you not at all. You leg and wobble it around, and it makes fleshy noises. All right, y'all finish your shopping. I'm gonna be outside. <laughs> I, I, I might. I think I'm gonna be sick. <laughs> you puke on it, you buy it. That is the store policy. Oh, that's fine. Uh, yeah. All right, I'm I'm good with shopping. Anything else for anybody? Or are you all good to go? As everybody's leaving, Kai's gonna stay at the table, and yeah, I have a I have a magic question for said no. Okay. Uh yes, young man. Yeah, I had a, I had a question. Um, I, I've heard that wizards like you are particularly adept at making scrolls and i'm curious would you be able to make like a scroll of minor illusion it's a lesser trick but my friend has really been wanting to try illusion stuff and i thought maybe something ah. like minor illusion would be a little bit easier maybe you have one to spare potentially i don't have a lot left but i just uh, want to try to help him out check. i think olive made one for me and he kind of and it he comes back and he goes, I have one scroll of minor illusion. Uh, this will be 50 gold. Jeez. Uh, Even the cantrips are expensive. Well, yes. I mean, the material needed to make such a thing is very expensive. Yeah, no, you're not wrong. Um, uh, anyone can make a scroll, right? If you have the right material and the right skill, yes, you can. Okay, then with all due respect, I think I'm going to try to make one for him myself. <laughs> okay. I completely understand, but you must understand that I also am trying to keep a business. No, no, no. It look, if I was as good at making scrolls as you were, I'd, I'd do it for a business too. Believe me. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, have a good day. You too. And if you ever need anything magical, come to Olive's Charm, where the charming is thing is the spells and also the clientele. Aww. Yeah. Goodbye. And... Mm. Well, that was a wash. Uh, actually, no, no, it wasn't. Well, I'm, I'm really confused. Um, did you always have that book? Uh, yeah, this is when we were dealing with the whole Mira situation. This is the, the book that we got. It had the stuff about the, the bark skin in it. 
So, well, I mean, can I look at it? Yeah, you absolutely can. I'm going to hand it to Iskan. I was kind of hanging on to it because, like the wizard said, uh, this kind of stuff doesn't get written very much. And even though there's some overlap with other people that use magic, I feel really bad about selling it or giving it to anyone. I figure if we can maybe find you another druid, I can give it to them so they'd at least know where it goes so it doesn't end up in the wrong hands. Kind of leafing through it pretty quickly. Um, is it all legible to me? It is, yeah. It's written in common, so it should be. Gotcha. Okay. Um, but I'm not really able to make heads or tails out of any of it. You'd have to sit down and read it. Like, you're in the middle of town with, like, people yelling about chickens and, like, you know... Oh, they better not be yelling about chickens or I'm gone. Donkeys hee-hawing here and there, so it's a bit hard to focus, mm -hmm. but... Yeah, yeah I, I guess that makes sense. Uh, and he'll hand it back. Okay. Where to next? I believe we were going to the barracks. Or not the barracks, no, the, uh, the bandage center. Yeah. Actually, can I run back into the wizard real quick? Are you joking or are you serious? No, like seriously, because I don't know if we ever got directions. But I was just going to see if they happened to know did. where the bandage house is. Oh, yeah, you didn't. All right. Yeah. Uh, Kai's just going <laughs> to open not. the door and pop his head in. Uh, uh, Anster? Uh, yes? Sorry, quick question. Do you happen to know where the bandage house is? Oh, yes, it's near the clock tower, um, to the left. It's right in the middle. It's an apothecary. You're not feeling well. Should I wash my counter? Uh, n no, we're, uh, we're just taking a trip there. We were supposed to go over in that general direction, and that was, like, the landmark use. So thank you. Yeah, no worries. Kyle pop his head back out. Uh, they said to, to hang a left. It's by the clock tower. It, like, towards the center of town. Good thinking, okay. brother. I mean, we probably pass. passed it on the way to the Adventurer's Guild. It might be an inconspicuous no, thing. we took the scenic route. Yeah, that too. No, we you know, Otho, it's okay to be wrong. Oh, we went left of the statue of the bear. My bad. What the hell is a clock? <laughs> bong, bong, bong. Uh, Ghosts! Where? <laughs> no, that's that's the clock. Eastman's going to point up to the tower. What the hell? Is, okay, what do you use it for? Well, I give it gives you a general idea of what time it is. Ha, that's crazy. Only wizards can do that. Well, not exactly. There are 24 hours in a day. And depending on how many times the clock tower chimes, that's what hour it is. Holy shit, Otho, you're a wizard. I mean, he could be. <laughs> you're a wizard. Looks at his hand. Go, go at, look. Uh, he's, but you don't even fucking need insight. Gaius is dead serious. He doesn't know what a clock is. Dude, Otho, you have the mountain everything. I have the what? The mount. You have an axe beak. You're totally a wizard. Who's just known for them? This is some reference that is passing right over my head, I'm sure. Gaius is now furiously writing in his book. As you guys make your way towards the bandage house, weaving through the crowds and eventually breaching through the road, you do see on the main level, so there's two levels. Remember, there's the, the upper catwalk level and then the main level. But on the main level, next to the clock tower, you do see what appears to be a large, almost um, frescoed, spackled mosaic building. Um, Shit. And it has, like, almost, like roman pillars on the side of it uh and you see a myriad of people come and making their way in and out and you see there is a uh a dwarven woman wearing what looks to be just kind of like general robes just kind of standing and kind of you know waving to people who are leaving and welcoming people who are entering and as you all approach and make your way forward that's where we're going to take our break oh thank you hey. all right oh I thank god potty time i need to pee <laughs> Welcome into the halftime show, everybody. How's it going? Hello, halftime fans. Yeah, it's that it's that time of the episode again where you can jump up, stretch your water, get some legs. The halftime show the is back game. in action. Uh, oh, so point of order because I didn't do it at the beginning because this is typical.
I don't want to do it. Uh, thank you to all the kind comments on the most recent episode about Radio Play. That's the, the new song that I put out with Black Griffin and Silver Hound. It came out on the uh, 25th. So, yeah, it's gotten a really good reception. Thank you for all the kind words. I really appreciate it. Other point of order, Halo lasso runs are awful. Also, come check I, out Monty going through Mass Effect on Mondays. It's going to be great. I, I walked in on your birthday stream, question mark. Oh, yeah. It was fun, right? Yeah. Uh, I, I, I like the part where you got a headshot after three seconds of respawning for like five minutes in a row. Yeah. It was great. <laughs> Halo is notorious where if you get a bad spawn, it typically spirals out of control. Uh, Mike in Pachi with 100 bits. Sorry for the confusion earlier, Bosco. I had gifted the entire cast subs. Now you all have Sun Toast. Nice. Uh, I see. Hell yeah. Representative Joints, thank you for the 100 bits. What if the medical tent is well visited because local lion attacks and that's the gang side quest? I mean, I'd, I'd be down for it. Hmm. Gaius tames a lion. All right, I'm down. Let's do it. Uh, yeah, right. Super down. Also, shout out to Artsy Hartsy, who put together the art slideshow at 4 a.m. with Evie and I after our Halo game because they realized, oops, they had done a fucky wucky and forgot to do it. That's right. Halo went till four in the morning because we're crazy and felt like we were in college again. Disc two. And now that I say that, I realize one of the people we play with is in college. <laughs> they could be studying and they're playing Halo. Nah, no, that really, really is college. No, nah, this is, yeah, that's what I did. <laughs> that's uh, the experience. Zen, Zen Little with 100 bits. I can't believe Bosco killed Kopnos and threw his body into the Unexpectiverse. I know, right? Where do you think Kopnos came from? It was totally Alabast. Where do you think the knuckle bones came from? Oh, shit. It was Calamity. Cop Copnos just looked yep. at his limp hand next season. Uh, that's weird. <laughs> I can't believe Calamity and Copnos' bones are just in this game. Wait, did that Bosco, do you miss being rich as Remy? I guess miss Remy in general. Being rich was a side thing. Mike, you think of the 55 bits. By the way, after the new year, I plan to use the site to make Unexpectables 2 Lego minifigures, including Monty. Nice. Go for it. Now, then you have to build them in real life. Uh, Dip and Bipples, thank you for the 100 bits. I now need art work of a bear in a nurse's uniform. Also, I passed my final yesterday. Hooray! Congrats. Does that mean you're a doctor now? Can we call you Dr. Dippin? And now everybody's getting season one nostalgia. I know, I feel y'all. Congratulations, Dr. Bipples. Your office is waiting. Doctor, 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 doctor. doctor. Nailed it. Give me the news, I got a bad case of Dr. Bipples. I, I would start throwing out Howard Fine and Howard jokes, but then that would show my age. You've already shown your age multiple times, yeah. Oh, yeah, I know. But, like, even more so, like, literally something that was done in, like, the 50s, for fuck's sake. All right, so just because I know there are a couple people in the YouTube comments that like ska like the rest of us, top three ska songs right now, go. Oh, uh, Little Doubt Goes a Long Way, I Want to Riot, okay. and... Uh, uh, oh, God. I know what it is. I'm just blanking on the name. It's another Who fucking real it? big... It's another Real Big Fish song. I, I, oh, I know okay. what I'm about. Real like, Big Fish they, or Real I'm, Good? I'm, I'm, yeah, so every, every time I just fucking think Ska, it's just like instantaneously just flashes to them. Uh, uh, Dip and Bibbles with 100 bits. Darn it, Bosco, I am a nurse, not a doctor. I have nurses in my family and a vet tech. But I'm still going to call you a doctor because it's Porque funny. No Dr. Bipples is great. Yeah, Porque no los dos. Why can't you be a Dr. Nurse Bipples? Mostly because that title doesn't exist. But beyond that, I mean, really, be an RN and an MD. You're, you're, you're treating the title like a fucking Final Fantasy job at this point. I mean, yeah. You can multi-class. 
Mike, and thank you for the 95 bits. That's the fun part, Bosco. I'm ordering the parts to make them in real life. Only issue is I have to repaint the satyr legs and head, and then only the purple head is Thanos, so I might make Gaius the mascot Zito pick. Aw. Aw. Wait a minute. Oh, Sammy oh, Zane's old theme is pretty legit. I will give you that, Henry. Uh, Killer Chansey, thank you for the 10 bits. Better place, better time by Streetlight Manifesto, Wanna Riot, and SR Live. Those are good. I, 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 wait, no, I'm actually wrong. The song that I'm thinking of was from Tokyo Scott Paradise Orchestra. Oh, what I song is that? I, I fucking wish I remembered. I have to hear it to remember what the title was called. Fuck. You need to YouTube that right I, now and go through. I'm YouTubing it right the fuck now. Have you never uh, heard that before? I don't think I have. You're going to have to look because you'll have to link Ooh. me and I'll let you know. Fuck yeah. Uh, Callum Draws, thank you for the 25 bits. Is it weird that when I first heard of Electrum, I assumed it was the D&D version of a credit card? When I heard Electrum, it sounds like a freaking Spider-Man boss. It does sound like a Spider-Man boss. <laughs> yeah. Mostly because of Electro, but whatever. You got some fans as well of your song choice, Zito. Paging Nurse have... Bipples, Paging Nurse Bipples. Yeah, it doesn't say Dr. Bipples is better. It's funnier. It's just, it's more uh, staccato. So yep. Uh, nurse Bipples with the three bits. If I multi-class, it would be Nurse and Assassin. Hell yeah! <laughs> That's so appropriate. Damn. It'd That's... be even better if you were a doctor, though, because then you'd be a surgeon and an assassin. You're good well, with no, a knife, and you can use it for a... good or bad. But as a nurse and assassin, your main weapon can be a syringe, and that's kind of badass. That is pretty cool. And terrifying, because needles are creepy. Also, a thethoscope as a weapon would be amazing. Like, you start using it as nunchucks. What about the hippo oath? You're going to break the hippo oath. The uh, Hippocratic oath? No. Not if you kill them in a way that makes them feel good first. Exactly. Also, I don't believe nurses have to take the Hippocratic Oath. No, they do. They absolutely do. Do they? Yes. Okay. That would be an interesting loophole. Nurse by day, assassin by night. I never took the oath. I never took the oath. This deathoscope is going where the sun don't shine. It's a deathoscope. It's a deathoscope. God damn it. <laughs> it's like a, it's that, that's the worst nurse death note. I'd watch it. Of course you would watch it. You'd probably be in it. I would love to be in it. <laughs> Mike, and with the 95 bits, sorry, Nurse Assassin makes me think of that Super Sentai Friday in California clip. I don't know what that means. I, I Mark, can you translate? No, I didn't get that. Got it. Magic Ninja Go, thank you for the 100 bits. Hey, guys, how's the weather been? I'm chilling in 57-degree weather. That's Actually, that's kind of nice right now. I think by me it's in the 50s as well. I'm going to guess 52. It's cold 55. here. 55. It's 55, which for all of you international folks, 55 in America is uh, 13 for the rest of the world. I Here, Bosco, I'm going to send it to you. I found the song. Oh, sweet. It's, yeah, it's Foggy. The Foggy's Not Dead is the name of the song. It's gotcha. 37 degrees Fahrenheit here, a.k.a. two and a half degrees Celsius. Ooh. Ace Bounty, thank you for the 100 bits. Isn't that basically the nurse character in Skullgirl's Bipples? I mean, I'd be down. Hell yeah. Especially because that's Laura Post. Heck yeah. Dude, I it is be currently Post minus two. Up. Minus two Celsius? Fahrenheit. Your We're only not four degrees oh. warmer than you, Monty. Yeah. Yeah, it's actually hey, Monty. warmer. Which is Monty, Monty, I'm, I'm 50 degrees warmer than you. Hmm? What was that? I, I, I'm sorry, we were talking over each other. I made a stupid joke and said your your weather's not funny. You said minus two. Minus. <laughs> yeah, I got you to fucking it's the stop Zito the sentence. I can no, it's think not the Zito bits. thing. It's fucking hey all, thing. thanks for helping me get through my chest tattoo yesterday. Took a lot of focus to not laugh and stay still while getting worked on. I don't wow. know if that was the best thing to listen to, but congratulations on not laughing too hard <laughs> when your tattoo got messed up. How hard are you? I got a chest tattoo while listening to the Unexpectables. And I didn't laugh Whoa. once. I don't know. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, let me see. Where did you post the song? Is it in general? It's in general. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, let me see. Let me make sure this is not going to... Yeah, it should not. 
This was like one of the uh, track. This is like one of the albums. Oh I had. yeah, I've heard this. Yep, I've absolutely yep, yep. heard this. I, I was like, there's no fucking way you haven't heard this. Are we all back? It's really, it's really so. catchy. Is Connor here? It sounds like it should be in yeah. Kill Bill, to be honest. At least at the start. Yeah. I mean, they, they they also like pad out the album, which is hysterical, with just like them just like fucking around for thirty seconds, and you can't tell what it is. Dude, if if you're really good at riffing, you could do a whole <laughs> album in a fucking day. Isn't that just literally just an album. the fucking? Isn't that literally just the fucking uh, the Tenacious D soundtrack? I don't know if they just did that riffing or if they actually wrote stuff. I'm not I'm not familiar with how they did it, but the songs are great. So if they did riff all of that, I would be amazed. Fuck yeah. Right. Let's get back into it. No. But our ferret. It's going away. I'm putting it in the bag. You Goodbye, Blackfoot us. Ferret. No. I'll see you soon. Throws it over a bridge. See ya. Oh my god. No. So again, before you you see a frescoed building with like roman pillars kind of decorating the entryway and in front you see a, a dwarven woman wearing nondescript robes kind of saying hello and goodbye to the people who are coming and going well also i think this is your stop suppose so <clears throat> what is nobody coming with me I guess we all can come with you. Yeah, we're all going in, I guess. Very well. Otho, you I'll in particular approach. will notice that the, the closer we get to the infirmary, hospital, whatever it is, the more, like, sucked in Kai becomes. Hmm. He notices that, and... He lets out a sigh, and he'll continue walking forward. Have a good day. Oh, hello. Greetings. So you, you wouldn't happen to be the proprietress of this establishment, would you? I am just the greeter. Um, if just... you're looking for the doctor, you'll have to go in and, and fill out a sheet about how you're feeling. The the doctor, are uh, they the one in charge? I suppose so. I, I, something tells me. She kind of looks around on all of you, except for Gaius. She kind of stops at Gaius for a bit, kind of all the bandages, and goes and then looks back towards you and goes, is this an inquiry of health or is this something else? This is something else. We don't necessarily need to see the doctor if there is someone more of an official capacity that we can talk to. Uh, I've what? come to understand that this establishment was uh, built up due to the influence of Brutus Valentinius. The funding of it was, yes, in, influenced by Brutus Valentinius and hosted by him, yeah. Yes, well, is there someone we can talk to in a more official capacity? We're just a hospice. We're just we a just... Of... We just need a, a bit of... A bit of paperwork. Um... <sighs> oh, you need a doctor's note? I see. You're trying to get out of something, are you? Eastcan's gonna slide in from off frame <laughs> in a way. And just look at Otho. <sighs> I am Otho Valentinius, son of Brutus. Oh, oh, so you're here for an inspection? No, I need someone who can prove my identity. Oh, um, well, what, who, oh, um, okay. You see, she's kind of doing that tappy thing where she's, like, looking side to side. Yes. I don't I've... know if we've got a way to help you, lad. I'm afraid we're not exactly a, um, a town hall or a, um, a place of high political power. Yes, um, I, I am aware. And he sort of gives Eastgan a look. Did your father not give you some sort of official capacity? I I don't I don't have any like I don't have any like 
sigils or indicators on my person that I am who I say I am. Do I you? I, I, I don't know your inventory. <laughs> I also. don't. Uh, I don't have any sort of signet rings or, or anything like that. Essentially no. what we need is we're trying to uh, get access to talk to a prisoner and the guards, well, they don't know him from you or me. So we just need someone who can confirm that he is who he says he is and something with an official uh, sigil or uh, seal. I mean this with all due respect, Lordling. I am a little confused why you decided last minute to get it here when you'd be better off getting such things at Martralo proper. Kai is going to step forward very sheepishly. Look, we weren't planning on making this a thing. This is just where we were sent. Can you help us or not? Oh dear. Um, give me, give me but a moment. Then she turns around and she heads inside. God, I hate the. Comes power. back with muscle and they throw us on the. Ground. <laughs> <laughs> they come back with a bigger uh, goat. <laughs> Uh, she does return with somebody, and at first you all kind of stiffen up. Uh, you see a tall, lanky, wearing a long, like, kind of brownish tan jacket that is just filled with just scalpels and tools and, and bandages. A tall triton man. Um, and what's oh. very stark about him is the fact that his nose looks like a fucking saw. Did we just fucking oh, find shit. Oh my god, man. he's trapped. Chainsaw Triton Man. And he's got like these sort of really tiny glasses just set above the bridge of the saw nose. And he I... looks... Go ahead. Go... No, you go ahead. No, I was going to make a joke. Go ahead. Uh, and he kind of walks over and approaches you and goes, Uh, I'm sorry. One of you claims to be the son of Brutus Valentinius. I am Otho Valentinius. He kind of narrows his eyes and looks at you and goes, you I scowl. Have... <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes, yes, I do yes. see the I've resemblance. Yes. yes. <laughs> 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 He's got his daddy scowl. Uh, Kai, are you hiding or are you present as well? Kai is trying to hide. Roll a stealth check. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> 16, let's go! Hey. Right, you you kind of skirt behind uh, E-Scan because he's pretty tall. We we're uh, the same size, but yes. Um, I would like to help you. Truly, I would. But appearances alone will not be enough for me to confirm your identity for a prisoner meeting. What exactly would you need? I would need confirmation, uh, sigil, family sigil, uh, proper documentation from your father, perhaps. Um, uh, I'm truly very sorry. Uh, will this do? This, this is a letter penned by Oslomir Harlan, given to us, not for you, but it does have his seal. Do you think we would be able to get a hold of this ourselves? We are not who we say we are. Again, I, I, listen. I'm trying to help you. I truly, I am. I I'm a little this. confused by your intentions. I'm a little confused by the lack of preparation on your own part. If you are who you claim you are, which I think you are, but I don't know. And unless that letter is penned to the person you intend to speak with or an official capacity towards the person you wish to work through, I'm afraid that you might have difficulties. Yes. I think we already are. Respectfully, indeed. I understand that you've probably traveled quite a ways, but um, there is a falconry. You could send a letter to your father and ask for perhaps the right paperwork and... There are lovely inns in town that you can stay at. Again, he kind of looks towards all of you. Uh, my apologies. I am just a practitioner here. We are not a political house. We are funded is... by your father. And to that, we are eternally grateful. But 
he does not come through here very often, if at all, and very often he only sends those to do inspections of this facility or to discuss more funding. We have never penned an official letter on behalf of your father, and nor do we have the authority to do so. Again, uh, apologies. No, this was uh, all very sudden on my part. Thank you. And Monty? we appreciate everything that you do here. Monty? Yes, he's can. Can I insight this guy to find out if he's honestly incapable of helping us or if he's just trying to get rid of us? Go ahead. Uh, soft 20. He cannot help you. He's being okay. very nice about it. Like, he's like, I know, I, I, because he looks at Otho and he's like, you do look like Brutus, but that's not enough, right? Like, we need to know that it's you 100%. Like, just looking like him isn't enough. And he's being, he's trying to let you guys down very easily. Mm -hmm. And he seems kind of upset that he cannot help you in the way you're looking for, because he can kind of, he's, you get the sense this guy is very, um, just by the way he's looking at you and just his profession that he's really good at reading people and he can probably kind of pick up on your guys's maybe anxiety about the whole thing and that's why he feels pretty bad so he's he's like a little bit remorseful that he can't help us but yeah okay again thank you for your time regardless of course and if you do not feel well or if you are in need of any medical attention we are happy to assist And he kind of does a very polite bow and then turns around and leaves. And the uh, dwarf woman kind of walks out and goes, oh, Sorry, boys. Best of luck. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry to have taken all your time. No, it's no worries at all. Eastkin's going to kind of motion for everyone to step away. Okay. Hi. And, uh,. Taking a few steps away from this woman so that we're at least relatively out of earshot, um, but not necessarily suspicious, just out of earshot. Um, Iskun's going to turn to Otho and Kai. <clears throat> you know, uh, in hindsight, we're probably not going to ever really get to get anything off of your name if you guys don't have the kind of sway that yes. I thought you would. Yes, that's what I was trying to sort of imply. I thought you were being humble. Any iconography or sigils or signets that I may have had on me were all taken away from me when I was kidnapped. Well, I cannot verify who I am. <clears throat> and I did not get anything from Harland about this particular endeavor, and it was foolhardy on my part. I apologize for dragging you all around. Not That's all right. It's just, it's just a bureaucracy working exactly as it's supposed to. Well, I probably jumped the gun a little bit, too. I'm sorry. I have another idea, if you guys are willing to hear it. Hmm? We're heading back towards the windmill anyway, where we got all this information from, right? No. No. <laughs> we, we got all this information from... And, uh, Ale Soaker? Miss Ale Soaker, indeed. Yeah, yeah, that's what I see. She was... She's here. in Quincunx, yeah. Yeah, here. So she's in town, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Um, the person that supposedly is supposed to be our contact, couldn't we just go to them and, like, s tell them to make us the legal representation, which would get us in? Who? You mean Miss Ale Soaker? Yeah. I don't think she exactly has the authority, especially since she's married to a theoretical criminal. Well, I mean... Legally, they should have some kind of visitation rights, right? Yeah, and if they send us either as visitation consultants or whatever, or legal rep, whatever, but we could talk to them, they could be our in. They did mention at, at the gate that, that we would have to be, like, legal 
legally representing yeah, above game, the, the prisoner that we right yeah and theoretically since he's in prison he would need le legal representation so they could say like this is our rep monty <clears throat> is there a bar association in <laughs> oh my god <laughs> um, is there some sort of exam i, mean, I can take <laughs> no yeah, i mean i don't mean it to be that far just like are there like appointed that, lawyers uh, that's tricky um Sometimes, um, I think he more meant that you guys are next of kin who have a ability to visit, or you are someone mm. in official capacity from like a high court basically coming in to say, like, we need Doing to speak an with this person. Inquiry. Yeah, gotcha. So, there's really yeah. no way we can legally get in there. Great. Well, well, I uh, my shot in the dark. I'm probably going to be the only one to say it, uh, so I'll just say it. I don't know if we can help this guy. Well, maybe not here. I'm trying to scout not things yet. out here. If we can get evidence, they can't deny it. I'm well, not letting this go. I'm not suggesting we do. I just, you know, like I just said, we don't really have any evidence. We no, but Milo had the right idea. With swords, but that doesn't really say anything. Yeah, but Milo had the right idea. If we go back to that bridge, we might be able to at least capture one of these goblins and then question them, interrogate them, find something. Can yeah, I give can you guys a hint? Sure. <laughs> I'm just sitting here, like, gripping my head right now. But that's okay. Um, you could talk to Glenda. I mean, that she is here. You've spoken with her before. So that is an avenue. I mean, that was the, that was the we brought that up. You yeah, did, yeah. You guys kind of abandoned that, so I'm just saying that well, that no, is... I mean, we were know, just saying here. that we, we're not going to get a letter from her that appoints us as lawyers. Right, but I, I no. would still recommend talking to them because we could at least update them on what we have. Which is... Nothing. We, we at Nothing. Least, well, we at least have confirmed that the swords have the mark and are being cycled around and let them know that we're going to the bridge to try to get more info. There's also a very key detail that you guys did that you were completely forgetting, which I'm sitting here and just like baffled that you forgot but i'm not gonna say no, what it was because it's, you forgot it's the it's the 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 letter of of commission that went missing because somebody picked the lock and took it from the ale yes yeah. we need to we don't we have no idea where that is though no we have no idea where it is and we don't know and we haven't it. found it <laughs> and we've searched every one of the goblins that we found who had those swords so clearly, whoever has it is probably higher up the ladder. So we're probably not going to find that amongst the goblins. I'm trying to remember, where was the um, the baker? What? Do you remember the, oh. the, the, the baker? Oh, that was the baker thing, yeah. In? That was in Hearthland. That? That's in Hearthland. Yeah, that, was Hearthland. Okay. that was Hearthland. Okay. That was when Milo got all excited. Yeah. I couldn't remember if that was here or not. Yeah. It's with a man who probably doesn't murder people owns a bakery. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Mm. probably doesn't definitely murder people. Yeah, all that you've experienced mm. in Queen Kung's is the guild here, the Adventurers Guild, is where you met Rebu, and then you also spoke with Glenda, mm -hmm. um, and you delivered a, a gift from her relative who lived in Fort Divinity and brought brought it to her, and she informed yes. you what her plight was. So and she didn't give us anything in to take in return, right? No. Okay. Well, she said she would reward you if you helped, though. That's that's a good reason to check in. We can we can go to her place and be like, look, we're heading back that direction. We don't have anything just yet, but if you wanted us to take anything to your relative, we'll do that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think I think we're just sort of spinning our wheels here at the moment now. Yeah, let's go talk to her. Okay. Kick down you the door. Or we kick down the, the door. Lieutenant. That's also yeah. a <laughs> Citra, Citra King. Citra King the door, and then we'll talk <laughs> to her. All right, you guys make your way to the ale-soaked whetstone. Um, and again, similarly, it's all boarded up mostly. It's all closed down. Um, Good Lord. Yeah, it's still closed up. I mean, I mean, she told you herself who's going to want to buy from someone who's supplied the greatest enemy in Martorallo, right? Mm -hmm. um, but as you guys approach, uh, yeah, the doors are boarded up. What do you do? Oi! <laughs> oh, Otho will, will knock on the door. There's a bit of time where there's no sound. Mrs. Ale Soka? It's us. Kind of, the door cracks open a bit and she goes, Oh, it's you. Get in, get in, get in, get in. She seems happy to see you. 
Oh, okay. Sort of, uh, oh, hurries in. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh that's gonna. <laughs> that won't last. <laughs> this band-aid is gonna get ripped off very fucking poorly. You all hurry inside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. As you make your way inside, the dusty and empty, uh, basically abandoned blacksmithy shop that's all boarded up. She kind of closes the door and locks it behind you. She goes, upstairs, we'll speak upstairs, okay? Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad to see you again. And she kind of makes her way up. She seems very happy in a weird way. The money up there doesn't have ears. Let's go up there. <laughs> 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 Fucking Calico pops out of it. <laughs> Dang, I see you're people. discussing secret things. I'm interested. <laughs> <laughs> you guys make your way upstairs, and uh, notably, it looks like you're not the only person who's visited before. Hmm. You can kind of tell just by their, when you enter into like a living room, there are two cups of tea that have been set aside, and she kind of gestures for you to sit and goes, You got word. You promised you would, but you actually did it. Oslomir Harland himself. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Looking around. Yeah. Well, did I? I was. You told we, him, remember? We told him, yeah, yeah, yeah. You told him. I wonder if that was the messenger in the night. Oh, that could have oh. been. To well. send his. So you, you kept your word, you you told him, and he sent someone to come help, and they've been working day and night. Really? Indeed. Who is, who is this person? I'm afraid we don't have much ourselves other than a couple of your scimitars that we managed to recover. And I'll pull you managed one out, to find sure. some? <sighs> Damn bastards. She kind of spits on the ground. No, no. Your Oslomir Harlan sent Vincent Hogshine, the Vincent Hogshine, to come and help me. <laughs> Would we have any idea who that is? Uh, Otho and Kai history check. History checks. I feel like we're about to fucking find like the villain in a in a Phoenix <laughs> Wright uh, tale. <laughs> in a second. Uh, we've we found Moriarty. Uh... That's, a, that's a fifteen. <laughs> uh, Eighteen. Oh, you two know Vincent Hogshine. The greatest Martyrolian detective who exists. Oh. Holy fuck, I was on point. <laughs> you, it is Moriarty. <laughs> Otho's eyes actually sort of like like light up for a minute. Vincent Hogshine was here. He's still I... here. <laughs> In the floorboards, look. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's coming to the ceiling. Oh. Thank oh. God, I've been holding my breath for days. <laughs> vengeance, see is the night. <laughs> he is Hogshine. Do, 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 do. He's one of the most. Uh, Otho turns back to the to the rest of the party. He's got like sort of a little smirk on his face. He's one of the greatest detectives in Matarallo. He's had books written about him. All right. I oh. the... <laughs> That's amazing. I take it that means could we'll we have better luck than we did. Could we meet with him? Well, he said he's currently uh, scouting out location, and he said he'll be back soon. So if you want to stay here, eventually he'll show up. I can make dinner for you. I wouldn't mind. <laughs> Looks to Milo. <laughs> I mean, if nothing else, I, I, I could help you with that. Certainly. He should be back any minute now. He said he'd return by sundown, and it's just about sundown now. We don't have anywhere well, we have to be right now, so... Oh, Don't good. think so, yes. Uh, out of curiosity, while we wait, uh, do you happen to have any of your swords that you or your husband made before that sale? Uh, I mean, we had plenty of goods that we made, I... i just like to compare the sigil uh, from something that was for sure made by him to one of the, the swords that we found. Certainly. I'll put a pot of water on, and if you want to go downstairs into the working area, you can go ahead and peruse through there. I don't mind. Uh, All of his work's going to be down there, so you'll be able to tell. Uh, Otho, could I borrow that sword? Of course. And I will take uh, one of the goblin swords down to just compare the, the, the branding. I think it was a, a teardrop, right? Yeah, it's like a wet, like a droplet effect. Mm -hmm. Basically, uh, utilizing my 
map vision for detail. I want to scrutinize them to make sure that they're actually made by the same person. Yeah. As you look, it looks like it's probably some sort of like, um, like a not like a brand, but like a metal that they press into the weapon, probably just to put the mark on it. And it is consistent. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. It seems that on like smaller weapons, like sickles and daggers, he puts it on like the side. And okay. then at the pommel, he'll put it on like bigger weapons, like scimitars and swords and and whatnot, and war hammers in particular. Okay. Eventually, you are all served up uh, pot pies, um, you know, mm. apple cider, and oh, you know, geez. there's a warm fire. It's it's a it's a dwarven feast, hearty oh, dwarven I can't wait food. To eat that warm fire. <laughs> <laughs> And eventually, as you are all eating, you do hear, like, this sort of, like... Oh my god, did you actually get it right and he's on the ceiling? <laughs> <laughs> and you watch as uh, Glenda actually opens up the window, and kind of, like, vaulting inside, doing a front tumble, comes a frazzled-haired... No, uh, sorry, halfling man... <laughs> wearing like like almost like a like a suit vest over top of like leather kind of garb like like sort of stealth garb and he walks in and drops the mask off and he goes well i say who are these chaps oh oh my my q vibes instantly died <laughs> my goodness he closes the door and latches it and then closes the blinds he goes glenda did anybody see you she kind of shakes she goes no 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 these are the friends the ones who talked to osmir highland for you he kind of looks at you and goes, Who are you and what are your purposes here? I must know immediately. I mean, she just I... said who we were. <laughs> that is not I... enough information for me. I need more. I am Otho Valentinius. Uh, and. Wait a second. I... Scowl. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> here we go. Uh... <laughs> what do you say? Scowl. 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 Scowl because your face is <laughs> great. Uh... Uh, oh. You are! <laughs> Who needs a symbol? You have the scowl. Yes, you're, you have the scowl, dude. My I'll just scowl, scowl the just Grr. like him. My Grr. goodness, the plot like thickens. Brutus Valentinius is involved. How deep does this rabbit go hole go? No, are they no. working together? Are they separate? Who's the secret agent? Who do you work Mr. for? Mr. Hogshine, Mr. Hogshine, I fear you may be looking into this a bit too far. No, I am not here on my father's behalf. I am here of my own volition. Uh, I am a, a great admirer of your work, Mr. Hogshine. Yes, well, I'm not uh, doing signings at the moment, but... Yes, well, we... No, I... I was the one who told Oslamir Harland about this poor woman's situation. Oh! And it... The mere thought about corruption in the guard just boils my blood. And Indeed. The hardest thing about corruption is ensuring that nobody knows that you're investigating it. Exactly. <laughs> Thinking about the day's events. <laughs> now that three people know we're investigating it. Yeah. He begins, yeah. he begins to pace back and forth and he goes, no, 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 this is good. This is good. I need extra people for this mission. Are you available at this time? I like, suppose so. Right now? You mean as a... uh, for the next possibly two to three days, potentially, depending on how things go. Uh, looks nervously at everybody. <laughs> I, 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 gentlemen, I, I think it's fine. Oh. Is there pay involved? Certainly, absolutely. We, we, we were already offered a reward by Miss Ailsoker here. Um, and I would not be too... Well, too proud to not give up a bit of my own fee paid by Osmir Harland on his behalf to you if you're willing to help because I have come to learn that this job that I've been set upon is actually much more than one halfling can chew and swallow. Really? This goes deeper than Wardner? Oh, no, no. Wardner Hall has individuals at her back end, Carl. <laughs> bit of a rhyme there. And I'm going to need a bit more muscle, potentially, or if not, a bit more stealth. You see, I've come to two conclusions. There are two ways to handle Warden Hall. 
And we have two options. One is much more bloody and brilliant and probably will make for a much better story. But the other one is much more efficient and much more clear and should completely abolish the red tape that's keeping us between her poor husband and justice. I can do one of those things. Good. <laughs> You're a strange fellow. He kind of looks you up and down. <laughs> yeah, I get that a lot. Whew. Interesting to say the least. Let me tell you what I know. And he kind of just pushes your food off of the table and then no! blasts down plans. I'll, I'll like no! catch it on, on a single plate, just like. <laughs> I'm like trying uh, to save the cups. Uh, guys doesn't like just let it, he just lets it happen. He just stands there and like looks down at what was once a plate of food. You oh, win no. today, starvation. <laughs> <laughs> So here is what I have come to understand. Glenda's husband made an order of scimitars for the guard. That was the original deal. And Glenda nods. And you are aware of this, yes? You're following along, keeping the tax yes. together? You may want to keep this... notes. This is very important. This might God, be on a test I later. Hope so. <laughs> <laughs> so, Glenda's husband made an order of scimitars per an order slip provided by the good lieutenant. Upon picking up the delivery and having it sent away and out of his eye's view, suddenly the scimitars go missing and are found in the hands of goblins. A few days follow, and sure enough, the man is arrested right in his own home in front of his poor wife. And when attempting to prove his innocence, the slip is just happens to be missing. How strange that is, how strange that is indeed. Now, we could assume that the lieutenant is responsible, but we do not know for certain. Perhaps there's a third party. Perhaps the slip never existed at all. Perhaps this is some sort of evil plan. Are there doppelgangers involved? Changelings, perhaps? You oh my god, there's passing. too many questions. I'm getting anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> so then I have a plan. Two plans, to be specific. One... I have come to understand and learn that another order for scimitars has been placed at another blacksmithy. Really? Indeed. Indeed, indeed, yes. indeed. A poor blacksmith on the edge of town who is barely a penny to his name has taken an order for a large sum of gold, and he is willing to take it and has, to my knowledge, and I assume as such, received a similar order slip as is protocol by the guards. Are you yes, following it seems me? seems some of the goblin scimitars have been going missing. Indeed. And you yourselves confirmed that they have been found on goblins, yes? We found them ourselves. I beat Good. them up with my bare hands. I am proud of you. You are going to be incredibly helpful. He points towards <laughs> Gaius. You are a secret tool who will help me for later. All right. He kind of cracks his knuckles. I'll give this to you, the master of punching. <laughs> <laughs> so... I have two master plans. By the way, I'm, you, I'm voice acting this, but like I am moving You're so much. You're doing well. I can hear great. you. I can yeah. hear you. I am your arms moving. Are swinging. Yeah. yeah, my arms are swinging. Yeah. I, I so can feel the method acting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So here is my plan. He kind of puts down some points. He goes, We have two options here, gentlemen. Option one we go in, grab the order slimp. Make a replica duplicate and leave the replica behind and hold on to the original version to prove that, in fact, the man that's about to make the scimitars did make the scimitars for the guard, specifically. Proving that the lieutenant did place the order for the scimitars. Are you following me? So far. Uh, swap, swap uh, yes. Paper with other paper thingy. Indeed. We would need to slip in to this blacksmithy shop, grab the original order form, bring it to me, I shall make a duplicate... And then we shall take my duplicate, place that into where we've got it, like, from where the original was, and we'll hold on to the original. So that way, if this man is also arrested, we can provide proof of official paperwork that this order was filled. Okay, but how does that prove that he didn't give them to the goblins? Because it proves that the order was fulfilled by the lieutenant. Meaning, she now becomes under scrutiny. Now, the other option I have is a bit more ham-fisted, a bit more to your friends talent, and he points towards Gaius. <laughs> well, oh, let's thank hear it. God. Oh, thank God I like being included. We wait for the order to be filled. The scimitars are made by order for the lieutenant. They are going to pick up the order, 
And to my knowledge, based on what Glenda has informed me, they pick it up rather publicly. But to where the scimitar go, we must find out. And when we find out where they go, we must track them to where they end up. Hmm. Now, the reason this one could be more risky is because there are more individuals involved. And I am sure for certain that if they are trying to hide anything, they are willing to kill for it. Ah, the flavor of corruption is always filled with killed. That doesn't sound very tasty. That's a or horrible flavor. Accurate. So, my fine gentlemen and friends of Ozmir Harland and do-gooders of justice, what do you think? Either one of those plans sounds good, but... Hmm. We either tangle this spider in the red tape of paperwork, or we catch them in the act. I do like the idea of catching them in the act. The that problem would be with, definitive proof. The problem with that is who we catch in the act, and after conflict is resolved, what evidence are we still going to have? We bring back one of them as proof. Well, I, I'm neither stealthy nor sneaky, so I'm going to trust all of your judgment on this one. Apparently most important am thing. I. <laughs> the, <laughs> most important, at roll 20. the most important thing about this is not so much about well, we we can make an arrest. I mean, I I'm Vincent Hogshide. I mean, I can make an arrest. But the important thing is to not let the villain know of our plan because they will absolutely jump town and leave. And that leaves us with no arrests and no proof. Jokes on you them. My mind's a blank slate. I don't know anything. That's not helpful for us. Uh, well, I'm, I'm uh, sorry. I'm trying really hard. I can tell. You've got like a little vein bulge in your forehead, and I can. It really hurts tell. so bad. <laughs> uh, in my opinion, uh, the second option uh, probably ensures that those swords never make it to more goblins. If we do the first, we can't really track where they go, and they're gonna end up in the hands of goblins either way. Hmm. The last thing we need is more goblins armed with masterwork steel. You've raised a good point, Mr. Seatlolly. So better than to just follow the order, so to speak? We'll stake out the location, see the pick of the order, and follow stealthily behind. I hope you all have disguises. Uh... Gaius bites this bottom of his fucking lip. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, oh. let me take care of that. I'll I'll make sure we have something. Just some robes will do. You know, inconspicuous. You are going to some... have to definitely hide yourself because you are just blue. <laughs> he just points towards you, Eastgan. Yeah. You are so <laughs> tall and so blue. Hey. That's fine. It's lovely. It's a beautiful shade on you. But I must say, for being kind of on the down low, it's a very bright and loud color. <laughs> Might as well be screaming, look at me over here. <laughs> well, I no don't offense. spend my time skulking around in the shadows. Forgive me. You should. It's quite a good time. You might find something. <laughs> <laughs> like secrets? Like corruption. He wiggles oh, his eyebrows. I, I hear it. <laughs> I, I guys wiggles his eyebrows back. I hear it doesn't taste good. See, I'm but you know what? Kill. But do you know what is delicious, Mr. Agni? Justice. I like. I like this flavor. Then it's best served cold. I thought that was vengeance. That too. <laughs> <laughs> Two flavors for the price of one. Hmm. <laughs> Cold so, vengeancy justice. <laughs> so we're in agreement then. You're willing to help me out, me, Vincent Hogshine, in <laughs> stopping this corruption. Yes, of course. I've never been ready for more. I've never been more ready for anything in my life. Ow. Uh, <laughs> Kai, you're okay with this, right? Uh, what? Essentially jumping them? If it comes to that, yeah. I mean, not in a not... violent way, more of an arrest kind of way. Guys, puts his axe away. Have Why you don't ever... we just lose <laughs> the democracy, right? I suppose I mean, that's I fair. Was, 
I was asking for your opinion on it, but I guess. Cool. So what does everybody think? Uh, all uh, in favor of staking out the shipments, raise your hand. Uh, Milo raises his hand. Oh, the raises his hand. He's going raises up. his. And Guys? there's democracy. I said I, I said I hold my hand up. A resounding vote for justice. Oh, I love you all. You're so good. You're the one who got me this gig to begin with, but you also seem to have a keen mind for what is right and good. Ah, oh, you are a rare I breed do. indeed in these desolate, unforgiving lands. Are you yeah, having a hard time finding <laughs> gigs? What? No, no, absolutely not. I find business all the time. Most of the time in the capital city. So imagine my surprise that I'm told to go all the way to Quinn Cugs, which is a far ways away on the fastest horse that I can muster. My... But when you are ordered by an ocean lord, and not only an ocean lord, but Oslamir Harland, you cannot say no to that. That is so much prestige and so much of a good story. And, I mean, who's going to speak up for the little people? And he points towards uh, Glenda, and Glenda goes, listen, just because I'm short as a dwarf doesn't mean I'm little. <laughs> exactly. I mean, you are size category medium creature. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Oh, God. So, <laughs> sorry, left the door open. <laughs> so, gentlemen, we're all in agreement. We are going to shadow these interlopers. We're going to follow them to wherever they're going to take these weapons, and we were going to corner them there. Arrest who is appropriate to be arrested, collect the evidence, and prove this man innocent. I'm all for that, but do you do you have? Proof, uh, maybe a, a badge or paperwork to, to prove who you are and you have the authority to do this? Of course. I got paperwork specific. I have a letter by Oslamir Harland for my investigation. I also have proof of my identification as a, as a detective who doesn't come to solve a problem without identification of themselves. <laughs> Can we see it? Sure. Yeah. And he kind of pulls it out and he shows it. Cool. What, what, what is it? Is, like, is it a badge? Is it a just a, a business card? What are we looking at? It's like a metal emblem. It's his LinkedIn account. <laughs> <laughs> he pulls out his cell phone. An emblem of what, Monty? I'd, lo I'd love to know what his calling card is. It appears to be an emblem of scales that are being held up by like a like a for sort of fishy fin almost. Hmm. And it's it's hmm. official detective of Martorallo is the title on it. Oof, and then he pulls the... he pulls out a letter that is marked by a similar emblem of Ozimir Harland, and it has been opened. Yep, yeah, checks out. I'm convinced. It's a very Good. nice badge. I have checked out the blacksmith shop. He's still working on the order right now. By tomorrow, it should be done. So, tomorrow, noon. Exactly middle of the day. I want you here, I want you suited up, and I want you ready to go. Wait, we're wearing suits? I thought you no, said robes. We're, we're wearing robes. Dis <laughs> disguises. Get, get, just... We, we will. Yes. <laughs> right. Good. Excellent. It's going to be good to have more muscle. You never know when you're going to deal with corrupt guards. They always seem to have more firepower. Brutes, as they put it. Thugs, if you want to be very technical. And that's all they are. Indeed. I thought they were guards. Not me. They were guards, but they've been tempted by greed and who knows what else. We don't know. We're going to find out. I don't they mean to say it as a matter of morality, although I'm just saying they're trained better than most brigands and thieves are. Oh, well, In yes. Indeed. If it comes but to fighting, we're going to have to be on our best game. That being said, do not murder... Murder is bad. In fact, sometimes very bad. In fact, quite illegal. So, I would advise that if we were to get into a scuffle, that we be non-lethal. Milo slowly nods. <laughs> I know, <laughs> exploding with the power of the sun. I got Guy has it. Got <laughs> his, his fists up. I was born for this. And I think we can accompany that. He watches, he like opens his little vest jacket and he just, it just, it's full of manacles. <laughs> oh. Wow. I didn't even hear those. They're quite good. He kind of puts it, vest of silence. You put things in, it doesn't jingle at all. Oh. I would love something like that. 
It was a reward for saving a woman's most prized diamond earring from a scourge of Sahagan pirates. Oh, I read about that. Indeed. The Violet Ark. It was a 500-page volume, and it was probably one of my best works, indeed. A thrilling help? manuscript of events, I assure you. Who would what have help? thought that a rich man would pin the crime on the violent Sahagans because he had such a vendetta against their leader? Eastgun's going to kind of nudge Gaius with his elbow. Yeah. You should probably be taking notes. This guy sounds like a great storyteller. I don't know how to spell Sahagin and giant. Uh, isn't what that what I, I, I can I can help you with that uh, Gaius oh thank god I can actually finish my train of thought that he's like shotting <laughs> into his fucking book like as fast as he can yeah, it was like that, like, that I've one been holding the block. same idea for 15 minutes thank you <laughs> alright gentlemen he places his hand down like kind of you know like in a powwow circle all right, hand goes in. Oh, enthusiastic a... hand in. Guys, enthusiastic hand. Athletics check. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> you're you're going to break everyone else's hand. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he wanted to know how fucking strong I was. Nine. Nine. You, and you hear, ah, from him. <laughs> <laughs> Eastgan will less enthusiastically and much more gently place his hand on the stack. Glenda reluctantly puts her hand and seems kind of confused by this. Social link go. <laughs> <laughs> the six Vincent of us looks all towards slow you, turn Kai. Towards Kai. <sighs> Kai will very shyly and hesitantly, like limply, put his hand on the top. For justice. One, two, three. For justice. For justice. For justice. Oh, sorry. Are we supposed to call that out? Yes, that's the point. That Not killing! Three sink. <laughs> <laughs> I will see you tomorrow. Middle of the day. No sooner, no later. Now be gone. And tell no one of this meeting. Well, uh, actually, uh, Aren't we, we staying tonight? One person that we're going to be staying a couple days. Uh, but we don't have to tell him about the meeting, I guess. Yeah, we can we can we can tell them that we'll be staying in town for a couple of days. Right. Although, uh, is uh, does it seem like Vincent is is uh, like paying attention to us as we're so, sort of huddled into our own chatter now? Oh yeah, this man is the most curious person on the planet you probably have met so far, and he's like looking between as you guys talk, he's like looking between you, reading your expressions, kind of taking drinking it all in. Smiling. I'm a reptile. I don't emote. We should probably be careful of staying too long. Well, yeah. yeah. Uh, do you think where we're gonna have to follow them to is anywhere out of town? My hope is that it's in town. That would make the most sense to have a drop-off point or perhaps a place to store their goods. Think about it like this. If there truly is an exchange going on here, if there truly is corruption within the ranks of the guards, then that means they must be getting something in exchange. And what happens when you get something in exchange? What do you do with it? Where do you put it? You hide it somewhere where no one can see it. Oh my god, this is getting me so anxiety written. I mean, yeah, it's, uh, if we just say we have some business to take care of in town, it should be fine. He nods. Uh, Otho sort of like looks down and like taps his knee when you say if we have time. Hmm? <clears throat> Is everything okay? Oh, well, um, it's just. You know, we can't afford to stay too long. We don't, trust me, I know. We don't want another incident like the one we had on the road. Right. And that's where these come in. And he kind of taps his goggles lightly. I'm not good at stealthing or fighting, but 
I can keep my eyes open. All right. All right. Yes. This will be good. This will be great. Well, hopefully this will bring honor to my family in some way, doing this whole justice thing. While they're Thank talking you. amongst themselves, Kai's going to go over towards the uh, detective real quick. Sorry, I didn't mean to mm -hmm. interrupt you, Monty. Yeah, no worries. Um, he's like kind of pouring over his notes that he has on the table, which are all just like, it's like the, it's like, like the, the red line notes, you know, you see. Um, there's like one image, it's like clearly a sketch of the, of the captain of the guard who's like, it looks like he's like eating a hot dog. But it's like oh a sketch. God. So you're wondering, you like, like an what? L.A. Noir notebook, Monty. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> uh, you you approach Vincent, and he kind of looks like this. Yes, my young sir. I'm um, sorry. I, I had a question for you, Mister Hogshine. If you have a quick second. Absolutely. You ever um, you ever handled a missing person case before? Uh, several. Uh, most of the time, it uh, usually devolves into an individual disappearing at sea, which I don't really do. I do land-based investigations uh, one or two times, but most of the time it's uh, missing items, murders, um, you know, fraud, uh, people cheating on their partners with this and that. Those ones are a dime a dozen. Happens every week. And uh, in all the years that you've been doing this, have you ever not found who or what you're looking for? That is an interesting question, my young man. Um, it depends. Well, the most person's case, I mean, the ideal goal is that you find the person who's missing, but sometimes it's finding a piece of them, or perhaps just a trinket, proof of their demise, knowledge of their remains that may be buried. Um, I usually come up with something by the end of it. I mean, I'm Vincent Hogshaw, and I have to come up with something, <laughs> truly. I mean, who would I be if not? Um, but I don't always find the person in question, but I do usually find evidence of the person in question. Yes, so at the very least, you find information. Some, you know. Information, closure. I mean, closure is the goal. Yep. Yeah, sorry, just curious. It was in my head. I'll, I'll let no you get worries. back to your work. I have a feeling that every time he says his name, it's like it's a smash cut to like a, a photorealistic painting of him like on a cover of a book. It says, <laughs> it says Vincent Hogshine in like golden script. He just carries with him an entire library of all the books he's written. So every yep. time he says his name, he holds up a different yep. title. <laughs> his cape starts billowing whenever he says his own name. <laughs> Where's that wind coming from? All right, well. Are you intending to stay the night here, or are you intending to return? I, I think Miss probably... Ailsoka, we would, wouldn't want to impose on you. We've Don't... got rooms at the inn. Yeah, with all due respect, I don't exactly have enough space for six eccentrics in my house. <laughs> well, that was a word. Fair enough. Now We've... I'm a coat. <laughs> <laughs> We've got rooms that we can stay in here in town. Thank you, by the way. That's no problem. Of course. This... This whole situation just... I feel pressure building up in the front of my head just even thinking about it. The fact that there's corruption in the guard, it just disgusts me. I just want my husband back. I really do. I understand that, Mrs. Ailsoka. And we will get him back. Thank you. Of course. And she kind of gives you a pat on your shoulder a couple times. He smiles. Well, gentlemen, uh, we have someone we need to talk to about this whole thing, so... I suppose we should... Get down to the inn. Yeah, fair uh, enough. I know the way. And again, middle of the day. At high right. sun, we meet. Oh, Will wait, do. don't worry. Don't worry about making your own code names. I'll make some up for you. I've already got it. <laughs> oh, boy. Wait, like titles? I want to have my own title. 
I must get to plan. And he watches you begins to scribble <laughs> on his paper. I do Very too. good, Inspector Hogshine. <laughs> oh, I do too. Now that I know that's a thing, I'm gonna be wrapped. My brain's gonna be wrapped around this all night. Ooh, I smell sugar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll step out. Right, Otho's guys, practically skipping. You guys make your way out and head towards the town. As mm -hmm. we're heading towards the inn, Iskin's just gonna kind of muse aloud to the group. I think I'm probably hanging out with you guys too much. I'm sorry, we don't really have a lot of chance to have a lot of alone time. Oh, no, no, that's not what I meant. I just mean... Well, you know... Every bone in my body says we shouldn't really waste the time on this, but also... I just feel like we should, so... And I don't think I, I would have come to that decision before meeting you guys. Haha, uh, you're becoming reckless like us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I guess wouldn't so. exactly call it reckless, Mr. Agni. And I understand how you feel, Mr. Seat Lolly. This sort of thing sort of felt like it was beyond me at a certain point in time, but. This sort of thing, it feels like I just can't sit back and do nothing. I've been pretty good at sitting back and doing nothing most of my life, so eh, I think it's probably a good change. Anyway, uh, uh, it's left up here. All right. Which inn are you going to? Uh, there we... were two. There uh, are four. There's, there's, there's four. 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 Last My time we were dead. here, we stayed at. I swear I wrote. My it phone there. is dead. God damn it. Uh, sea Dragon's Drink was where we stayed last time. Okay. You're heading back to the Sea Dragon's Drink. I imagine since that was where we met Rebu, he would probably go there as well. Hopefully. Because I don't think we talked about it before we split up. <laughs> okay. As you guys make your way into the inn, it is crowded. When you get to the front door, there's like people looking in through like the windows with the windows open, and you hear you see a bunch of people like kind of run past you, going, "I heard it was here," and they kind of run past you and kind of head towards the inn. There seems to be some sort of hubbub. I hope we can still get oh. rooms. What's all the hubbub? Bub? Hey, bub. God damn! Hey, bub. I, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> you watch as like a, a human man kind of tries to shuffle through you guys and seems to be heading towards the direction of the oh, tavern uh, itself. Uh, hey, uh, excuse me. What's happening? Apparently, there's a strange person who's performing at the inn at the moment. A strange person. Yes, a sky person, they call it. A sky person? A person from the sky. I see. He kind of looks, kind of looks towards party. Milo. That's called an angel. I, don't look at me. It's, it's not like we're all related. Well, I and suppose we should go have a look for ourselves. Wait, of course, it's from the, of course birds are from the sky. Wouldn't it be a bird person then? We better find out. Yes, let's just go see for ourselves, I suppose. That's what everybody else is doing. All right, you guys make your way up to the tavern, and yeah, you can see how crowded it is, and people are kind of, like, trying to squish hey. in. Hey, Monty? Yeah? I'm going to mirthful leap my ass to the front. Okay. Poing? <laughs> <laughs> we can't get through all these crowds. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> Open this <laughs> pit up. I like to imagine it's like the uh, fucking it's, it's the, the, the Mario Sonic. Jump voice. I was gonna say the Sonic like uh, bumper noise. Oh my god! Like the spring. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wrong. It's a bounce pad. <laughs> As you spring ahead, you can hear like voices, but most people are like, Shh, quiet. You kind of hear like kind of hushing. You do hear the strumming of an instrument coming from within, and a voice, kind of ethereal. As you all kind of like push your way through and you do mirthful leap you kind of have to like bound from table to table knocking over drinks and people are like i kind of yelling at you 
<laughs> but you do hear cutting through the crowd the lyrics of a song that rings in your ears or an ethereal voice. Deep in the bowels of the dark, sent the heroes to look for their mark. Though the dank and dark gloom to the forest of mushroom, to the mystery matriarch fair, to the lands of lost music's despair. I shan't not speak of the dark, where a spoken word even can spark, a concussive array of echo relay, and beast whom this voice dare not talk, and beast to this voice dare not talk. Cousin, oh cousin of mine, of fractitious, raucous rhyme, they found you there, strained in music's despair, a bastion of he the divine, a bastion of he the divine. And you see, swinging around and dancing in front of a very large crowd, this creature. Oh, yeah! shit! There we and go. as they strum once more, a bastion of he of divine. And that's where we're going to end the session for tonight. Oh, before, you end the session, before you end the session, could you describe this creature for the, the, the podcast? Yeah. Indeed. You see what appears to be, it's so hard to describe, a masked creature with like the kind of billowing poofy hair. Um, fingers that are almost like these claws that kind of strum on the instrument. And their feet come to a single hoof. Almost similar to a satyr, but not like a hoof. It's almost like a nail, like a singular nail in the front of the leg. A long, mm. swishing, lion-like ta tail of white fur lashes behind them, and they wear a simpler traveler's garb of reds and blues. And as they swing and bow, the crowd applauds. And again, that is where we're going to end the session for tonight. Yeah. Bye, Austin. Well done. Bye, Bye Austin. Austin. It's that thing from the thing that plays at the beginning that we can't talk the, through. the intro video. It's the, it's the opening mystery character. And art is by Brachyzoid, actually. Thanks, Bracky. Yeah. 23, right? Yeah. 23. Yes. So wait, is this four now from the intro that we've met? We've I think met. more. We've met the more? the outsider. We met the outsider. We met Lin. We met Rebu, and now this guy. Yeah. Is there that anyone is else four. in the intro that I that we've met? Um. Oh, that we've met. Met. No, just some that we've heard about. Right. Wow. I get the feeling worm worm tongue. I believe has a has a quick flash in there. Probably. I knew it. I knew it. It's all coming. Yeah. I, I fucking knew it. Worm tongue's a Gengar. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh uh, yeah, there he is. <laughs> this He's whole back. time. This whole time we, we knew what he looked like. Uh, <laughs> wow. I'm so well. excited about this guy. This is like the one uh, not the one, but like the one I was most excited about in the intro. I'm glad we finally get to meet him. Yeah. Thank you, Mon. There'll be us snooping around in the background in that intro video. Did you guys did you guys want to hear the lyrics of the song one more time? Yeah, sure. sure yeah, yeah. It. I'll just, I'm not going to sing it. Deep in the bowels of the dark, sent the heroes to look for their mark. Through the dank and dark gloom, to the forest of mushroom, to the mystery matriarch fair, to the lands mm -hmm. of lost music's despair. I shan't not speak He's... of the dark, where a spoken word can even spark, a concussive array of echo relay, and beasts whom this voice dare not talk. And that repeats. Cousin, oh cousin of mine, of repetitious, raucous rhyme. They found you there, strained in music's despair, a bastion of he the divine. Damn. So, are they they're, talking, they're about... talking about the realm of discord. And if, right? The cousin? Yeah, the bastion of he the divine. Yeah. If was in the realm of discord. Yeah. And they are wearing a mask that looks strangely aspecty. Yeah, he's he's singing about the unexpected. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Specifically of of the journey to find if in the realm of Discord. And thank you for the song. Uh, so how can I like? Uh, I'm I'm suing for you know just. <laughs> <laughs> 
This man did not ask for permission to tell my story. This is this is my right. Keyword: the unexpectables. Uh, speak to my lawyer about royalties. Uh, Copyright. Uh, what year is it? Uh, I'm going to have I'm going to have schlubs on YouTube. Uh, take every sample I have and copyright troll every single one. You got you you hear Dude. crickets in the background of one of my songs? If you fucking hear crickets again online, I swear to God, I'm getting all your money. It's, it's me, a panic grim tongue creator of the oof sound. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> the oof sound. Uh, wow. All right. Huh. Sing happy birthday in Alabast. He gets like a fucking royalty check for fifteen hundred dollars. The gold just is automatically subtracted from your pouch. <laughs> you should absolutely write the Alabastian happy birthday song. That's just the that's just spirit journey transformation anniversary from Aqua Teen Hunger Force. No one gets that reference. It. Hell fucking And there yeah. you have it, homeboy. I'm the only jerk off here who watches Aqua Teen. I haven't seen it in like 15 years. I only watch it for Carl. I haven't watched it in a while. Oh, hey, you know God. something, Panic Man? You can go ahead and shove it. <laughs> who did this to my freaking car? <laughs> well, uh, with that, uh, I suppose we should go ahead and do our outro ductions. Uh, Gaijin Goomba, where can they find you? What are you up to? Oh, trying to stay awake. Uh, you can find me at twitch.tv slash Gaijin Goomba every do that. I almost said 2007. That doesn't work. Yeah, dude. <laughs> no. Every 2007. No, I was Every in 2007. <laughs> Tuesday, Tuesday, Saturday, Sunday, 7 p.m. US Central. Uh, build streams, probably more Dark Tide, and then that creepy Shinto Zelda game. That was cool that you know, Zeta played. There, there we go, that one. You don't know me, that's it. Yeah. That's me. All right, Mark Allen Jr., where can they find you? And what are you up to? You can find me on Twitter.com, at Mark Allen Jr., here on Twitch at Aeon Pro Tech Gaming. And you can follow the adventures of my fat, sleepy cat bunny on Instagram, at chonk for life uh, Watch Blue Lock, the English dub. I play Kuan. New episode should be up this Saturday. It's a big one for me. I hope you guys like it. I'm genuinely, I put a lot into this episode. So, like, truly hope you guys like it. Uh, other than that, uh, streams when I can get to them. We're going to be jumping back into Digimon World 2 at some point. I don't know when just yet. Possibly Saturday afternoon. I don't know yet. Kind of figuring that out as I go. Um, but, yeah, that's it for me. Right on. Uh... Zeta, where can they find you, and what are you up to? You can find me at twitch.tv slash Zito and CZ Backlash on uh, Twitter, which I actually am going to go ahead and just post a picture of all of the character designs I'm going to be selling on Friday at the early start of this week. Uh, well, at the early start at the end of this week. Uh, here, I you can find me selling these character designs off before I start playing Jabroni Brawl with stream. Uh, beyond that, you might catch me also draw up some fake mod because I caught the bug to create, and that's what I feel like doing. Right on. Uh, Edward Bosco, where can they find you, and what are you up to? Uh, you can find me at Ed Bosco via on both Instagram and Twitter, right here on Twitch.tv slash Edward Bosco. Right on. Monty Glue, where can they find you, and what are you up to? Oh my god, you can find me at Monty Glue on Twitter. You can find me at twitch.tv forward slash Monty Glue, where tomorrow will be more Dungeon of the Mad Mage uh, at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Boy, oh boy, did some shit go down. Uh, um, they went through a magic gate, and now they are in a completely different floor, and now things are going to happen. So please, uh, please come and check that out. It's going to be a good time. Oh, yes, All and right. Monday will be Mass Effect. I, f I forgot. 2 p.m. <laughs> Mass Effect as well. Oh, my God. Uh, VOD's only up on my channel, by the way. I have a YouTube, so check that out. Something did amazing I did happen during Thursday night's game. Somebody somebody took the dodge action constantly, and this chat, this overlap chat, didn't give them shit about it. I see you, well, people. Well, yeah, because it wasn't Bosco. And to be yeah, fair, his swings I were doing you. no damage to the enemy, so that was literally nope, his best it. option. It is a valid uh, yes. strategy. Uh, yes, literally the, the creature the, literally the creature was immune to its attacks so what else was he gonna do 
He could keep swinging or use he that. He could use action. the help action. The help keep action. Keep on trucking. <laughs> ah, yes. The good old Tannis Gambit. When your swings are ineffectual, so all you have to do is dodge. I was really hoping you were going to make a rhyme with the word sexual, and now I'm disappointed. Well, you know. <laughs> Welcome the to silence. life. Let's continue. <laughs> uh, they can find me on Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube.com slash Distortion Devil. I stream Tuesdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Uh, yeah, started up Grim Fandango. Really good game. Have a blast with it. Uh, also, uh, check out my DMs Guild. Got the, uh, the Reaver Conclave in development currently. Uh, Ranger Conclave that pulls from the power of the ethereal plane uh, to help you uh, reap the souls of your enemies. Is this the leg legacy of Cain? It could possibly be. Oh, ho, ho. Uh, yes. Uh, that's happening. Uh, yeah. Uh, this episode was brought to you in part by Die Hard Eyes. I didn't roll it a whole lot today. I love you, Die Hard Dice. That's right. Die Hard Dice is your one-stop shop for dice and dice accessories. And if you head on over to dieharddice.com, you can use the code UNEXPECTABLES to save 10% on your order. Uh, get those orders in now. They're... they're their deadlines to optimal yeah. shipping times for the holidays. If you are if you are British, now. If you are not British, you have some time. Do it yesterday. Uh yeah. Um should we since it is now officially December, uh, at least in my time zone. Uh should we go ahead and say what our December lineup is looking like, Monty? Let's confirm it first before we announce. We can announce next week and be informed. Okay. Yeah. Tune in next week for notifications. Tune into our Twitter, our Tumblr for notifications on on what's going on in December. For stuff. Yeah. yeah. There might be there might be some. Uh, we won't be streaming at some points, but we just want to confirm the dates and then we'll let you guys know. Yes. Stuff. And there and also works. There also may be some other things like announcements. Yeah. Do you know what's better than announcements? No. I literally Bits cannot think subs. of it. I love this. Where do we leave off? They help they help keep us alive. It's true. Where do we leave off for bits and subs during the Bosco halftime show? I believe it was, uh, it was we, we left off at Magic Ninja Go, one of their oh, okay. later bits. <laughs> I, remember, I do we got remember. one from Nurse Bibbles. And then, yeah, I remember from Nurse Bibbles. That that was like the latest <laughs> one I remember. Uh, let's see here. Let's see if I can do these. Uh, Mud Martin, thank you for the 30 months. Neo Ander MCD, thank you for the 20 months of Prime. Dr. Caliban, thank you for the 29 months. Mikan Pachi, thank you for giving a tier one sub to Boar TS90. Uh, Protoss103, thank you for the 10 bits. Time to ace attorney this. Ace Bounty, thank you for the 200 bits. Oh my god, this detective reminds me of Abraham Von Helsing from Bram Stoker's Dracula. Yeah, just a little bit. Uh, Mr. Insecure, thank you for the 100 bits. Episode title, The Smell of Justice. Oh god. More like The Taste of Justice. I was about to say taste, taste of yeah, Justice. The taste of Justice. It's, it's uh, very murder. I, I, I feel like that should be the title. The Taste of Justice. Yes. Zen Lita, thank you for the 100 bits. Vincent Hogshine is now your friend. Vincent will now die for you. <laughs> oh, God. What? Our, our social rank. No, uh, I know. Our, that was, our that was the yeah. next line in the... From the Him Days yeah. comic. Man. Yeah. What? This steak sucks. Wake you up! Uh, How do you like your coffee? Black. Don't be a fucking, like, weenist. I know you're lying. Alright, that surprised me. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Who 
wants to talk about murder? <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Yay! Uh, I miss Hi, I'm Daisy. They're still doing work. They're they're doing yeah. other things now, and they've acknowledged. They're like, I you know, I, I'm glad people still like those dubs, but I've moved on, and that's cool. Right on. Yeah. Uh, Ace Bounty, thank you for the 210 bits. Halfway through the feathered back, our misfits make the city. Our oh boy, uh, our misfits make to the city of Stacks, looking to a wrongly jailed Smith, with the help from a detective who aided with. Now with the investigation on its way, stalking at noon to go there, land guard prey. Uh, Protoss one hundred three. Thank you for the ten bits. Look at Panic wearing that. Per <laughs> Where? Look at Panic. That person's wearing a mask. Wait, no. Look, Panic. That person's wearing a mask. Uh, I do not. I do not perceive it. Henry Skelliman, thank you for the 14 bits. So, Connor, how does it feel to have Panic's praises sung? I mean, I feel like I've deserved it. After all the shit I have been put through. Uh, definitely, you know. No one else deserved it, only me. Yep. Nope, but did it all myself. <laughs> did it all, all on my back. Everyone else was an albatross around my neck. <laughs> <laughs> We've been wearing those guys anyway. Slowly, re slowly redacting everybody from my tales here. <laughs> Wait, no, my zoo! Ah! <laughs> get, like, guy? Thanos snapped to get Did you hear about dust. this book that released? Yeah, it's got, like, three words in it. Hey, but it's 300 hey, pages pa long. Hey, Uncle Panic, I just, I'm gonna invite you to my wet. Who is that? <laughs> Who's that strange little tiny red rat? <laughs> Callum Draws, thank you for the 25 bits. Uh, I love Otho being a Sherlock nerd. More like a schlock nerd. <laughs> hey, got him. Shut up. Got him. Hey. Me a, I need hobbies. I'm so tired. Uh, Protoss103, think of the 10 bits. So panic. This guy's making a song about your adventures without your permission. Yeah, no, we've talked about this. My lawyers are on it. Uh, wait, no, there's no bar in here. Fuck. Yeah, there are no lawyers. <laughs> Damn it. The wild Guess I'll just kill him. Martyr all <laughs> Uh, Magic, Magic and Jago, thank you for the 100 bits. Uh, dude, we actually have a very, uh, a few very close bingos. Ooh. Killer Chansey, thank you for the 10 bits. Episode title, A Case of Identity, uh, both in just to Otho having to prove who he is, uh, as well as the title of a Sherlock Holmes book. Ooh. I felt so bad that you guys were, like, running around for identification. I'm like, guys, I'm like, guys, I'm sorry, but... Uh, we'll talk about it after the stream is over. That's but okay. I just I was I was sitting here literally like with like the like blinking neon sign of they are lacking critical information leaping yeah. behind me and it's just like oh, It's man. okay. Only Tommy thinks I'm an idiot. <laughs> uh how's the peeping, Tommy? Who cares? Uh Callum Draws, thank you for the fifty bits. Episode title Sleuth Songs and Scowls. Oh my. Hmm. A bit long. Uh, Shinichi Kid, thank you for the 50 bits. Will they be able to prove this man's innocence? Or will everything fall? Only Detective Otho can find out who, which one will prevail. Tune in next week for Kate. Wait, no. Uh, wrong one. <laughs> this is my nemesis, Teeth Also Lord. streams here on the Unexpected Saturday night. <laughs> hey. who, is who, is, who is Otho's, like, Dick Tracy, like, 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 evil villain, like, Nate? My Moriarty? <laughs> Yeah, no, who's your, well, the Dick Tracy just like, ah, yes, it's my nemesis, Teeth Malloy or some shit. <laughs> Teeth Bones Malloy. Bones McKenzie. Yeah. That was the pirate. I have no idea. I didn't watch either of those. Uh, but we'll find out. Why don't we? Mm. Uh, Callum Draws. Wait, no. Blackfoot Ferret, thank you for the, uh, the, the leap bits, Zelda Heart Get. Dip and Bipples, thank you for the three bits. I am now drawing up a sketch for a deathoscope for a button. <laughs> Thanks. Yes. <laughs> Hell yes. <laughs> Behold the deathoscope. <laughs> Guys, what ails you? The question is, does it allow you to hear the dead? Or does it kill people when you place it on them? We're just turning him into light Yagami at this point. Oh, my God. I mean, all <laughs> nurses are necromancers, so. That is true. That is true. 
history. Callum Jaws, thank you for the 10 bits. When the detective talks, I could just hear the smear frames in his movement, despite not knowing what he looks like. I'm surprised I didn't punch my desk, because I, I my hands waiting. were like You going. punched something. I, I, I did, I, yeah. I feel like Monty was the embodiment of the fucking, like, Fallout, like, Fallout Boy fucking, like, image of him just, like, bending his body in a U. Go with the <laughs> nope. <laughs> yeah. There was a lot of, like, neck snaps and a lot of arm shifting. It's the fucking, like... Oh god, what is it? The Johnny Test whip crack every single yep, time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and finally from Dreadlord Bedrock, thank you for the 32 months. Wee! Wee! And that's about it. Good session, about it. Yeah. Next session, you guys we have to do... Uh, so I'm just going to confirm for my own preparation's sake. You guys are going to obviously be shadowing these guys, right? Yes. The shadow. All right. And Sick. Then mo and then most likely beat them up. <laughs> With our fists. Or get beat up in the process. All right. Then... Well, who would we like to raid? Uh, hmm. Live shadow or get beat up hard. I Did have two we... people. Mm. Would you have someone, Zito? I have three, but what do you got? I have, uh, he might be finishing our call, but I have level one Eevee who has eight viewers right now. <laughs> yeah, go for it. Play and they're in our, Duty. they're playing some Destiny 2. They're in my, they're in my, uh, Mad Mage game tomorrow. Yeah. And they also play Halo with, uh, fucking Bosco. With Bosco, and, who and solves yeah. mysteries with Velma. <laughs> Wait, no, that's not Sorry. So you guys okay if we raid level yeah. one Eevee? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Mm -hmm. All right, sick. No, I don't care about guest stars. What should our raid Why? message be? Fucking Twitch is being like, you can guest star people, and it's like, I don't need to know that right now. You heard it here first, folks. No guest stars. No guest stars. Huh? Never, yeah. ever. It's just, stars. it's just us forever. It's just us forever. Justice forever. We're what is our forever. message, you guys? Justice. We're, I do like scowl. Scowl. That's pretty scowl. good. Scowl. Yes. Scowl. <laughs> All right. Scowl justice, will be the right justice message. Justice scowl. Justice scowl. Justice our move. <laughs> All right. Get out of here, everybody. Goodbye. See you next week. Have a Unless. good bye. Pee pee. <laughs> First of all, <laughs> range fight. <laughs>